rare one gang this is a live episode uh mm. recorded a little earlier this summer as a matter mm, yeah. of fact at the state theater new jersey in beautiful new brunswick new jersey now this is a live we love movies episode wow. all Wizards. about the bird cage that's right and this is very exciting we got some uh, vhs trailer game live we do some in-studio audience uh, support there it, aud- you know the audience of course yes, yes we all have a wonderful anecdote that Steve shares about an angry Mike Nichols. Oh, yes. A, a vindicated, uh, he's singing dashboard confessional at his fucking top of his lungs. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. We, we, you know, we almost didn't get into the theater. There was a nasty car show outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. So trying nasty. to obstruct. Uh, but we got inside. The fucking theater was beautiful. You know, the lounge that we were playing in the theater. The staff was great. Great audience, fun time, fun time talking about a great movie live. Yes, which yeah. you know we we do so rarely. And this was our first. I mean, this is our first uh, Robin Williams movie in forever for a good reason, and it's <laughs> on the right. WLM uh-huh. feed. And, and, you know, it was a good way to do that. Yeah, we, you know, we've been wondering right. for the better part of a decade now, like how are we going to ease back into it and. What turned out happening was to do a WLM where we're fucking celebrating. This, but now we can do Bicentennial Man. This, oh, yes. yeah. Also, this has been the long road to get the Bicentennial Man, Flubber, and a couple yeah, other ones. Yep. It's, it's open season on it now. <laughs> now that we said some nice stuff. Exactly. A live it's on we've the said our novenas, you know. It's on the main feed. We'll just be like, hey, listen, every time we do a new... Uh, the Williams episode be like, hey, listen, just listen right. to the birdcage first, and now yeah. we're going to have a little bit of fun. And now get back into it. That's right. So here we go. State Theater, New Jersey, New Brunswick, New Jersey. We love movies all about the birdcage. Enjoy. All right, I've been waiting a long time to do this. Jersey, what is happening? We oh, hope a lot. Yeah. Wow, thank you for all coming out to this, despite the counter-protesters across the street. <laughs> yes. With the straight pride parade that is the car show. These, I think these, that's what car shows are, yeah. These pro-Buick people, I hate them. <laughs> if you want to see David Bowie's music, Butchered the Kingdom Come... <laughs> Come yeah. to the New Brunswick Car the Show. The same cover band can't do Neil Diamond and fucking Bowie. Okay, no, no. That's let's, let's two get on separate fucking acts. theme. Yes. Let's get on fucking theme, mm. folks. So says you. you He's an start- open thinker over there, free thinker. You want to do Dion and the Belmonts? Fucking fine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Hey, uh, happy Pride, y'all. Yeah. Are, uh, do we have any Kennedys here tonight? Are any Kennedys in the room? The younger ones, Teddy? Did we get Teddy from the grave? I don't know, dude. If I'm, I'm not sitting next to a Kennedy if I can avoid it. <laughs> that's a, I Black think that's cloud a, over that family. No, I, I know, dude. Yeah. 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 A car or a plane with those people. <laughs> There'd be a red mist all of you if you sat next to a Kennedy exactly. too long. Exactly. Yeah. I don't understand the, the gag there where Robin Williams is like bummed that it's not Ted Kennedy. I think it's a drinking joke. I think it's like, oh, oh Ted yes. there it is. Place. Famous booze hound, not We're so getting... much sex symbol. Got exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> got it. Yeah. Got it. I mean, RFK Jr. and JFK Jr., which I assume are the two younger Kennedys there hanging out for the time. Being. I mean, they only hate vaccines. So, or at least one half of them. So, well, like, one's been dead for 20 years. Well, yeah. <laughs> I assume his ghost is against There was it. what, Joe Kennedy the third, and he hated marijuana. He thought it was scary. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he had a bench sign saying that, too. 
This is what y'all came here for, right? Kennedy the fucking talk. Kennedy family tree. Yes. <laughs> We're just recalling. Uh, now we'll map out how Arnold Schwarzenegger comes into the picture. Because <laughs> he married one of them. Let's start the show. He comes into the picture already. <laughs> I'm coming into the picture at the gym. I'm coming to the picture on the beach. <laughs> You watch that Arnold documentary, that clip that we've been talking about for 10 years is all over it, and it's hilarious. It's the best. I love these chairs, by the way. I feel like oh, I'm yeah. fucking Dick Cavett with these yeah. things. Yeah, it's huh? nice. They knew we were coming. I do feel like we should be smoking, though, like pivoting yeah. and smoking. We're just like, so what do you think about <sighs> the Andes? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, I am so happy to be here. Thanks so much for coming out, everybody. Let me ask you this. How many of y'all are familiar with the show we run on the internet? Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. Well, this is uh, pretty much that, but in 3D. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too many dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> we were against it at first, being alive in front of an audience. We were like, you know what? They should be disgusted, too. Not just mm-hmm. us. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say about this? Well, this is very special, too, because, uh, you know, this is a pride show. We're all here uh, feeling the love. So this is technically the first ever official We Love Movies episode that we've yes. done. Yes. Uh, so, you know, if you came here thinking like, oh, man, are they really going to be ragging on the birdcage? No, we're going to be celebrating the birdcage. Yes. While also making fun of parts of it. <laughs> um, There's a few things. Have you heard about this guy, Val? Oh, oh my God. Not like him. You mean cinema's greatest villain? Yeah. This fucking kid. Now, before we get too far into that, I want to do something really quickly. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'd like to play the VHS trailer game really quickly. That is right. Steven. America's favorite game about obsolete materials. I'm just rolling around. Uh -huh. at this uh -huh. So you know, much fun. You, you can keep rolling because I'm, I'm not playing today. You're not going to play? I'm not playing. No, you know, because like it's so awful like playing it in the studio. I think we should leave it up to some fine folks out oh, here. No. What do you think? Some of y'all want to play the VHS trailer game? Put your hands in the air. Uh, yeah. Please. We're going to, yeah. Anyone who. All right, let's see. What, do you, what was, was there a stipulation no, here? What, no, anyone who wants to do it. I mean, well, really. I don't, I'm not going to have a fucking gun to somebody's head. <laughs> What the I fuck? Will. All right, uh, dude in the mask, most definitely. Uh, let's see who we hear. Uh, how about, uh, yes, you man right in front of him. And uh, oh, right here, front row. Yeah, glasses. Yeah, there we go. Clear frame glasses. Come on <laughs> up here. Pick your seat. Welcome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take a seat. Well, choose your champion. Who do you want to play for? That's true. You playing for me? You're playing All for right. me. Yes. There we go. All right. The there we go. Is, there we go. The way go. this works is you're going to be playing for your uh, uh, the person sitting behind you. They'll be holding the microphone. This is a VHS trailer game where I'm going to just kind of give you some clues on some movies. And usually it's trailers from the movie at hand. But actually considering the event and what we're at, these will be basically... Big queer movies of the 90s. So keep big queer movies of the 1990s, not the 1890s. No. There's a uh, few of those, too. Only yeah. one or two of them. Uh, the None released on VHS, though. Yes. <laughs> but let's uh, see who, who we're talking to today. Andrew? Hi, what's your name? Kate. Kate, and uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a software engineer. Oh, cool. Software engineer? Like, uh, like games? Like fun stuff? Uh, no, library applications. Oh, oh so right. absolutely not. No, well, that's, that's very cool. That's fun. <laughs> no, but it's not a game. It's serious business. Well, we go from Doom to the Dewey desk. I, I thought <laughs> Doom sounded like Dewey, but it doesn't. Well, no, it doesn't. Yeah. They're almost there. <laughs> Dretching it. Now, do you play the VHS trailer game along at home? Yes. And okay. how do we do? About 50-50. All right. Better than me? Better than me, so I like those odds. Yeah, Excellent. That's fair. And what's your name? Allison. And what do you do for a living? software engineer. <laughs> All right. Wait wow. a minute. Oh. Is there a conference? Is that where we are right now? <laughs> All right. Now, sir, what, what is your name and, and what, what do you do for a living? Is it software? Uh, pretty close. <laughs> uh, I'm Matt and I do data and IT for nonprofit arts organizations. Okay. All right. right. Oh, That's awesome. Go. Nice. Oh, actually, we don't know. Uh, Ma'am in the middle, do you work for the, the United States government and like shooting people and stuff? Is that your software? Drone warfare? <laughs> Oh, internet. Okay, that's good. But this is great. We got we got some eggheads up here. I'm feeling reinvigorated about the VHS. That's <laughs> right. Maybe by the end of this, I won't be in last place. So the Fingers way it's going crossed. to work is I'm going to start reading a clue. There's going to be five clues. The first clue is worth five points, four points, three points, two points, one point. Um, and when and if you think you know the answer, you should raise your hand like you're in school. And I mean, these eggheads know that, but you know. Uh, huh, huh. <laughs> what? What? We uh, tried. <laughs> we tried very hard to scam everybody and for me to give all the answers to Allison here. Yeah, but it didn't go through. Uh, it, didn't it was a different person I being, being check them. But I uh, so, but if you guess 
incorrectly in that one round, you're out of that one round. You can come back to the next round. There will be four rounds. Again, big queer movies in the 1990s. Here we go. Mm-mm. Round one. Game Master's Clue. Mm. Love uh, it. This road movie with a mouthful of a title finds dra- <gasps> three dragons of... Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? It is not oh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Adventures, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it, 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 adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? It's not Adventures of Priscilla, Priscilla right. it's Matt. Chu Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newman. That is correct. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there was, it's really, it's a, I, that's the thing. At, at the two, end yeah. of, at the end of the clue, it said middle American, and that would have cut you out because basically there's only two, it's a coin flip. So that's one. <laughs> Congratulations to Matt. Five big points I, for I, Eric Siska. I love it. this. Team I love Siska. This. There you go. I love Team this. Siska. It's the only way he gets points. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Round two, here it comes again. Game Master's Clue! Mm. Uh, make sure your parents are asleep when you're watching this one. A steamy neo-noir where two women meet, fall in love, and turn the tables on the mob. <gasps> Matt again. Bound. It is bound Woo! for five more. Wow. Oh, Eric. shit, Chris. <laughs> Let it be known that Eric Siska is down with OPP, other people's points. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and PP, see me after the show. <laughs> uh, and round three <clears throat> from 1998. A legend. Wait, 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 wait. What mm-hmm. is this? It's, it's another. It's a, a, a Game Master's uh, Clue. See? Uh, see? It's important. Uh, it's, I'm just gonna be too comfortable in this chair. <laughs> uh, a legendary rock star's life and career are reimagined after the filmmaker couldn't get the rights to the songs to highlight possible sla- the possible his possible slash more than likely romantic relationships with other male rock legends. A legendary rock star's life and career are reimagined after they couldn't get the rights to his songs to highlight his possible slash more than likely romantic relationships with other rock legends, 1998. Is anyone I love that? People in the audience yeah. are raising their hands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. Apologies, we will be not calling no. on anybody. Uh, but, all right, we're going to- Trust be, me, I know too. over there knows it big time. It's a tough one, though. It's a tough one. It's an, uh, Tribune trivia. This is now for four, point, four more points. This film structure, a journalist tries to figure out a mystery concerning a cultural icon through research, through research and interviews with those who knew him is taken directly from Citizen Kane. So it's like a Citizen Kane riff, rock star, queer movie. Mm. Okay, no. there we go. I just figured it out. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, tagline, the secret to becoming a star is knowing how to behave like one. That doesn't help anybody, does it? No. The tagline never actually helps anybody. Here's star number two. Uh, Jonathan Reese Myers is in this movie. Mm. Uh, yep. Uh, Velvet Goldmine? It is Velvet Goldmine for two big points. Yes. All right. There we go. My wife's favorite movie. That's why I threw that in there. It's a good one. It is. And good music, too. It is. And now for the final round, thank you all for playing. By the yes. way, don't rush off the stage. We have goodies for folks. Uh... From 1997, <clears throat> a I keep forgetting to do. Dude, God damn, who are you? I thought the game, game was over. Game Master's Clue, a wacky comedy where a small town teacher has his life <gasps> upside down. Uh, I saw Matt. I'm sorry, I had to do it. Inside Out. It is Inside Out. Wow. Oh, actually, no, incorrect. It's not. No, it's incorrect. Not. Whoa. In and out. In and out. <laughs> yes. And I love that. Look at that. That's five Thank points. Thank you. Five points for Chris Cabot. I love that. Everybody got something right. Everybody <laughs> feels great. Go. That's, That's awesome. That's why everybody gets a prize. And, and the what, tradition whoa. of We Hate Movies prize giving, it's a real here. You throw this out. <laughs> Matt, as you had many, uh, you get a, both You get a, a Blu-ray of No Way Home from Spider-Man. Uh, or, not from. Spider-Man gave you No Way Home. Uh, <laughs> now, this is, this is We Hate Movies memorabilia. We watch this to do our commentary track. So yes. that'll be worth nothing in a day or two. And <laughs> everyone gets a signed VHS. Matt, you get to pick yours. These are all episodes we've done. We've got Kindergarten Cops, Simone, and Rambo 3. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to do it, dude. It's a real stat. There, oh, I knew Simone would be the last one, but it's still a good movie. Round of applause for all of our contestants, Thank folks. You. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you guys you. are great. Thank you so much. Well, well, well. So we're here to talk about game shows. Yes, we are. Of different game shows. 
Pat Sajak retiring. <laughs> it's Good. happening, folks. Fuck there's a, there's a, someone in the wings, maybe. Oh. Oh. Similar name. Steve Similar Sajak. name. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's true. They barely have to, like, you know, respell the merchandise and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. So Pat Sajak absconded with the fortune. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Add a D in there. Just put a, a Sharpie D in all the all the memorabilia. Yeah, we got. exactly. That works. <laughs> It'll work. Don't worry about it. Sharpie so we D. are indeed here to talk about the Birdcage from 1996, directed by Mike Nichols. If I can untangle myself, there we go. <laughs> uh, quick question: How many of y'all saw this uh, before the show this evening? A lot of folks. Everybody's seen this. Come on, right? Everybody saw this movie, I feel. Uh, well, you just, you want to ask, uh, you know, because it's just, it's going to be spoiled for you right now if, if you did true. it. That's all. It's true. I got to, here's a place to start because I was blown away by this. Okay. Mm. You guys catch the uh, the photo section on IMDb for this movie? <laughs> I missed it. No. no, no, no. Well, I'm a real thorough kind of fellow, you know, sure, so I was, sure. I was checking it out and you figure like, Wow, you know, directed by the legendary Mike Nichols, written by the legendary Elaine May, yeah. legendary cast such as it is, you know, all these great opportunities for production stills and behind the scenes, you know, glimpses and whatnot. 90% of that shit is screen grabs of the standard def DVD interactive menu. <laughs> we need to get moderators on this website, folks. Is it like where they, is it like screen grabs of like the biography section? Dude, it is, it is that, but it's all, it's like a walkthrough. It's like picture one, the menu. <laughs> picture two, this is me selecting talent bios. Wow. Picture three, the list of the talent bios. Like, Real worthless shit that should not be taking up space well, on the you know, internet. Back in the day, people were afraid of DVDs. You know, you needed to walk them through. Like, it's okay. Very scary stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the they, Terminator 2 one? It's absolutely petrifying. All the flames and stuff. I thought that shit was going to come right out. I thought the robots were inside the TV coming to get me when I put that on. Every time. It's scary as yeah. hell. Well, I wouldn't mind an animated menu, but I'm just saying, you know. I don't need a picture of what the DVD looks like on IMDb. Maybe that's one of some of our computer programmer friends can figure out <laughs> yeah. how to fix the IMDb. You'd become a billionaire overnight. Now, uh, my favorite piece of trivia on IMDb, not to make this a whole IMDb thing, but I love this so much. After Mike Nichols showed the final cut to the editing team in Martha's Vineyard, they all had a celebratory meal. Mike Nichols said, I was very emotional ang and angry. <laughs> I couldn't speak through the lunch. The film is so good, so strong. I realized so I had no inkling of my anger towards those people who had written me off. My reaction was instantaneously was, fuck you, you bastards. <laughs> you thought I couldn't do this anymore. Well, look at this. I love the idea of making the birdcage is a really positive and fun. We're like, fuck you. I did it. See, it's fucking good. I'm good, you piece of shit. What you think you are, I am. <laughs> I live this shit. I might fucking Nichols. It is amazing, like, because Mike Nichols is a very, like, suit and tie guy, like, a very, like, yeah. very buttoned up humor. And just to watch, think of him going Sam Kinison <laughs> for a moment, just to tell everybody, fuck you. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Seething with rage about, I don't even know what, like, a, a, a one thumb down review of, of Working Girl. Be like, motherfucker! <laughs> yes, it is a beautiful celebration of the community! Ah! 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 Oh, I guess we don't, we don't like Melanie Griffith now! I guess we just don't like Melanie Griffith now! Yeah, but I'm glad Gene Siskel is dead. There, I said it. There, I said it <laughs> at this Martha's Vineyard lunch that I'm screaming at. And you just, you know, Elaine May was like right there. Okay, Mike, that's, <laughs> Mike, uh -huh. that's enough. Okay, let's go back to the house, do some improv, <laughs> calm you down and get you to bed. You Put know? on some jazz. <laughs> You know, all your movies are out on DVD, but The Heartbreak Kid is going to be hard to find in 30 years. Ah, ah, <laughs> do they have interactive menus? Is there talent bios? <laughs> there isn't a picture of me behind the camera, but there's a fucking interactive menu picture. Ah, ah. Okay, Mike. Okay. That's, that's good. I didn't know all that right. dude was so tightly wound. <laughs> Maybe we we switch to water now. Maybe um, <laughs> any any more salve? Yeah, I want more fucking salve because I made the bird cage. God damn it! Uh, you don't know what that is because it's not out yet. This is just a rough cut, but it's an amazing rough cut. All right, you know what? I'm gonna leave now and give the servers a tip now, <laughs> just to make sure nothing happens at the end of this. Thank you for attending this small friends and family screening. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> That's great. Oh my Not God. what I expected from Mike Nichols, honestly, no. No, no. real unhinged lunatic, apparently. <laughs> 
But we do, we, we start the movie and there's a good push in on South Beach and uh, we get to know the Birdcage, this club that uh, the Coleman's or the Goldman, Steve? It's the it's the Goldman's. Goldman's. If you're not anti-Semitic, but if you are <laughs> <laughs> and you're afraid of that, you have to say Coleman for some reason. I am also a huge rube anytime like the name of the movie is the place we're going to. I'm like, that's the name of the movie. <laughs> and it's also the Birdcage, too. Oh, so like when they pull up to the the like garage and Reservoir Dogs, and it's like <laughs> Reservoir Dogs Auto Body. You're like, oh, that's right there. <laughs> oh my God, they are all good fellas. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, he's the Citizen Kane. <laughs> oh my, oh my God, that's the rock that they're going to. <laughs> exactly. He oh. said he just well, Sean Connery welcomed me to the movie. <laughs> Oh, wow, they are the Ghostbusters. <laughs> you, you know, technically, I think that missile is the Broken Arrow. <laughs> For some reason, the only example I can think of is The Bridge, which is a, <laughs> which is a grim documentary. Yeah, it, it's pretty grim. <laughs> The that Golden was Gate. the only thing that was coming to mind. I still got Mike Nichols yelling in my ear. <laughs> you know, here's something about that Hold shot. Carl, Carl, he's, the, he's the graduate. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> There you go. They all there have carnal is. knowledge. Yeah, they all do have carnal. <laughs> and in the end, we all had carnal knowledge. Uh, now that shot's cool. You know, it's one of those fake, like it's supposed to be like a single take thing, yeah. which is fine. And you're seeing like you know beautiful Florida, you know, and all the cool lights and everything. And I, I absolutely love how this shot is kind of totally ruined by the disgusting, blocky, yellow font. Like, it's a oh, yeah. DVD with bad subtitles. <laughs> like, poor choice for this. F it's disgusting. Well, you want to know that it's a show, right? It's in big lights like that. You want to know it's, you're, you're about to watch a big show. So I but, think it was just a stupid decision that they shouldn't have done. But No, it's maybe. terrible. I, lo I do love, like, the the opening, like, 15-ish minutes feels like a play. You know, you were really, really close in, and, like, we're following. Steve. Love, yeah. It was a play. <laughs> oh my God, that's right. even better. So, because it was, it's a remake, right? It is. It, it's re well, it was a play first, and then they made it in France. La Cage, what I, as an idiot kid, was calling the Cage of Fools. La Cage, <laughs> cage, 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 no, 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 cage of Fools. <laughs> Uh, and it was a big hit in like 78, I want to say. Yeah, that sounds uh, right. And this was a part, of course, of this run of After Three Men and a Baby. French movies being remade by yep. everyone. You got to do it. Was one of the better. This and True Lies, two of the better ones, yeah. honestly. Yeah, because a lot of the times the uh, like sense of humor doesn't really translate. Yeah. Yeah. Like my father, the hero. Yikes! You know, <laughs> over oh there, they, they find uh, you know all of that real hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna shock you here. The French version of this has a lot more race stuff that you don't want to import. Wait, over what? There. I know, very surprising, very surprising. <laughs> well, it's funny because the uh, I believe isn't it, I I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry was an Australian remake, which is oh no, it's no, are you being serious or is this a bit? No, no, I'm serious. I believe <laughs> oh really? It was, I, believe it was I didn't know. <laughs> I think it was a Paul Hogan movie, and it was Paul and, Hogan. And, and it was called a, a little classa to marriage. <laughs> a classa. But I mean, look, if you're trying to make like a, a movie about gay rights or whatever or about uh, uh, gay couples, I would much rather it be from France than fucking Australia. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's a tall order. Yeah, you got Mel, Mel Gibson. That, they, don't right. even, they don't even play football right down there. <laughs> they do not. <laughs> they, they play the other kind. Uh, but yeah, so like we're we're used to uh, Robin Williams, uh, the late, great Robin Williams. Hell yeah. Armand best. Goldman, actually. <laughs> you know, what's the scheme? Like, were you, uh, how does this work? You, you're, you're, you think your daughter's marrying Coleman, and then yeah. suddenly her name is Goldman? Or? I don't, yeah, that, that's, none of this, may, I mean, it's a farce, so it's not, you can't hold it too much to. Sure. But still, like, yes, yeah, you're going to get married to this guy, and like, oh, wait, no, I'm looking at the certificate. It says Goldman right here. And yeah. like, <laughs> well, at that point, you know, all the deposits have been put down. I and see. Yeah. It's all about you the know. money, getting the money out of the, out of the account first. Exactly. You want to get Hackman to write that check, you know. <laughs> well, I love about this opening also is that it's all about professionalism. It's about showing how yes. good Robin Williams is oh, yeah. at his job and like running yeah. these people, getting like. And it's amazing because this is when the complication comes in that uh, Albert or Starina yes. is not going to come down. Uh, and, and like, you would think that they're just going to go over the top all the place, but it's no, it's all very like showmanship, showmanship, yep. showmanship. He has the great 
great reaction though because we're doing this like really long tracking shot once you get in the club and you're following him and he's like schmoozing and doing the whole thing the, the bit where he opens the kitchen door and the dude has just dropped the chicken on the floor yes. and he's putting it back on the plate Eric, was your skin crawling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, is what, a, this is how it happens. This is how it happens. That's how I it mean, starts. The food preparation, there's problems going on. Oh, yeah. Especially you, people you may know and think is fine. They've got weird ideas. <laughs> you see this video on the internet? There's What's a lady, this? Uh, she, she cracks an egg and drops it on the counter. She sucks it up with her mouth. And what? S- and spits it into the pan. Is this a Pornhub tab? I was going to say. Well, what are you going to click on to get to that? How do people, people, this is just what my mentions are. Oh, yeah. just, <laughs> of course. Just yeah, sending yeah. me this stuff. The algorithm thinks you're a real sick <laughs> fuck, dude. Hey, Eric, check yeah. this out. Oh, my God. Wait, so it's, is it like the scene from Tampopo when, like, she puts the egg yolk in her mouth and then, like, uh, she and the dude are, like, going back and forth, like, snowballing uh, the egg pardon yolk? me? Uh, hey, don't try to make hey, this reasonable. This is Tampopo. Insane. Listen, Tampopo, amazing film from Fantastic Japan movie, from like yes. the 80s or so. You will be hungry at the end of that movie. But they snowball an egg yolk no, in a sex So scene. to answer your question, unfortunately, no. I really would have liked a, an interplay there with another character. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just a lady just like sucking up eggs off the countertop and spitting them into the pan. To what end? To cook dinner. Oh, no. For, For her you. baby birds? For you. <laughs> A spit that's, omelet. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. what they're doing at Denny's when they're when you order the fucking home star omelet, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a, the grand slam gag and barf, dude. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And she's not coming down, and we're you know we we, we notice very quickly it's a drag club, and like the, the you know uh, and Robin Williams has to go up there and like kind of fix the situation. We do with it. You got to point it out, folks. As great as this movie is, the like in between act while uh, you know he doesn't want to come downstairs. All these people are getting dressed up in some Native American headdresses that it's just it's not flying these days. I gotta be honest with you. And yeah, uh, yeah, Rob Wilson. And now the eighth wonder of the world, King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if King Kong was there. Like, oh, that totally. Would be Drag show and the greatest show you'll ever see because it's an enormous ape, Carl right. Denham's giant monster. So when you were watching that movie, was the ape the all oh, that's King Kong or was the show? The King Kong, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's King Kong. <laughs> the greatest. That's the greatest show on earth. All <laughs> scary. Also, by the way, King Kong at a drag show, you put a wig on that guy. You know, now we're having fun. I I'd watch it. it. Now, it's, now, not only are you watching an ape, the world's largest ape, but that largest ape is serving. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Well, that's what's going to happen eventually because you start off and it's like, oh my God, the biggest ape ever. And then six months later, now the biggest ape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got to start doing new Spice things. Give him a up. sword, yeah. Yeah. give him a wig. There's all kinds of things you can do. We, uh, we also meet uh, the great Hank Azaria as Agador here. Oh, man, he's funny in this movie. But he- here's the beef I got with Azaria. A couple things in this movie. One, you forget that you have signed on to look at Hank Azaria's feet like 90% of the time. <laughs> I mean, not too bad. Pretty good, I gotta they're, say. They're not bad, but I got a feeling these are some shaved feet, dude. I feel like this dude's really hobbiting it up. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Off screen, but also the you other thing—that stolen valor shaving your feet. Yeah, I do. Okay. I do because I got to walk around with hobbit feet. You got to walk around with I hobbit did. feet. I did. Oh, no. I shaved my feet once, and then I was like, "Am I going to do this all the time?" Nah. For who? Exactly. For a funeral? Yeah, I was just sort of uh, for a few, was, What are you wearing? Fucking flip flops to a funeral? <laughs> Depends for on a, who it is for a funeral. <laughs> we we now lay Jimmy Buffett to rest. <laughs> They, he have a forever a cheeseburger in paradise, everlasting. He, he would have wanted it this way. Oh, you dude. yell at me, but he would have wanted it this way. Nary a hard shoe at that funeral. Nary a hard shoe. Hey, Bubba, if I sense a single shoelace at my funeral, you're getting haunted from above, man. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Jimmy Buffett impression or not, but I figured why not. Close enough. <laughs> oh, the other thing about his area, right? So, like, incredibly gifted comedian, uh, incredibly gifted voice actor. You get to see how great he is doing physical comedy in this movie. This movie, on the whole, is a fucking master class in physical comedy. Sure. Why does this dude have to be so goddamn sexy on top of it all? <laughs> he's just caught. There's the scene where he's out cleaning the pool in the fucking banana hammock, and I'm like, you voice most is like, yeah. you don't need an ass like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, by the way, this what whole- the fuck? Doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. I mean, this, the Apu thing. <laughs> 
And most is like, that's pole face, folks. <laughs> I should be voicing. It's just like S-Z-Y. Cisco, S-Z-Y. There you Put go. Put me on The Simpsons. What are we doing? This has been years, Eric, yelling about yeah. this. This is his little hobby horse. Both of you plan on sticking your head in an oven with a sign on the back that says no funeral, too. I, I just imagine, like, yeah. you know, like, you stole my bit. Dan Castellaneta, like, getting, just checking into the booth, like, he lost three pounds, and he's like, oh, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And then fucking Hank Azaria shows up, like, Fuck that guy. <laughs> it's like, watch me do Clancy Wiggum with my fucking sick abs. And he's, he might be an immortal too, right? Like he's still looking so good. Oh, well, that's just, you know, you got all the money in the world, man. You can, you can pay to pickle yourself like I, that's that. True. That's, that's, what, that's what I want for me. I mean, that's the thing is like, if he starts taking it off in the idol, that, that might actually fix the show. Yeah. If I get to start seeing Hank Azaria naked, that might do it. What he's, is he doing on that show now? He's like uh, sexy a little, teacher? Sexy pervert? teacher? Pervert? 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 Sexy pervert? Pervert? I feel a little overwhelmed. Teacher, uh, teacher pervert? Uh, no. They uh, exist. Uh, no, just like Perverts a, a are father taught. figure, it's I guess. Like he's a manager. figure. To whom? To Lily Rose Depp. Oh. Him and Jane Adams are managing. So not doing a great job, you're saying. No, not so great. That's why I'm saying, hey, get him naked. Maybe we got something going here. Is he putting a voice on on that show? A little bit. Like what? Like what? It's, it's, I don't want to do it in front of people. Oh, well. <laughs> he's he's, he's sure. an expert. I am me. Yeah, all right. No, fair enough. I was just curious because, you know, I'll never watch it. Well, that's good for you. Yeah, uh, so Armand <laughs> is trying to get uh, Starina down to do the show. Uh, and she's upset because she believes he's cheating on her because he is chilling wine uh, and didn't tell her why, essentially. And they only drink right. red wine. This is white wine, et cetera, et cetera. Tannins! <laughs> and this is all, by the way, It's it starts even before he shows up. Val is fucking everything up. Oh, Val oh yeah. is being an asshole. It's, oh yeah. He is so lucky he wrote Capote. <laughs> Woo, boy. Woo, boy. Because yeah. otherwise, I would have, like, a, a, a John Malkovich, like, headshot on a dartboard <laughs> with gunshots in it. Like, just absolutely, I would to, never to, forget I him. mean, to ask them to rearrange their whole lives and lie for nothing. Because, you know, what? Ha- you know, after they're married, then, you know, it's all going to come out. You know what I mean? Like, what, and you once know, you allow like, it once, it's going to keep happening. Yeah, the marriage true. isn't going to last, by the way. So, like, I know they made, a, a, like, a film <laughs> sequel to the La Cage of Faux. They didn't do a sequel to this, but if they did, him and Calista Flockhart are no oh, more. Oh, no, not at all. But you are totally right. He is Dan stick to screenwriting Futterman uh, <laughs> playing Max I, But he's, he's very pretty. He's cute in this sure. role. He looks like floppy hair. Looking, I wish I had a son to swap with Armand. <laughs> My lord. <laughs> He's a he's a handsome man. He is a very handsome man. I do think they should have kept at the end. Uh, everybody knows they they play the wedding during the credits. Mm-hmm. I actually think they should have kept the wedding in. Play the divorce. There it the is. Yeah, that's yeah. It. There it is. Then we totally got right. something going. We there. aren't family. <laughs> Sign this paper and I'll be free. <laughs> I got all my lawyers with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Armand's just uh, just standing there. I told you. I fucking told you, didn't I? We, I did all that shit for nothing. But here's the thing, though, is I have a lot of experience in uh, it is possible to open two bottles of wine at the same time. Yes. And so what is it this motherfucker's like, you know, hey, Pop, I'm coming home. And I fucking swear to God, if there's red wine that's open. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. He, he goes through the fucking deal of getting this white wine. And then the son of a bitch shows up. You got a beer? Yeah. Hey, yeah. you, you want to get me a beer? I'm in college now. You got a beer? A Miller Lite, if you would. Uh <laughs> But in this scene, obviously, uh, starting to play by the great Nathan Lane. Hell yeah. Um, the best. Fantastic. Yeah, you can give it up movie. for Nathan yeah, Lane. Yeah. Fantastic in this movie. Dude, Dude rules. rules. Dude rules. And this He's was great. like his kind of like, I mean, he'd been in stuff, but like this was like his big kind of coming out thing. Like, obviously, the Timon role is great, but Ooh. like. He's not actually a meerkat, you see. Um, Wait, what? I know, I know. know. Like, you know, he kept getting offered these meerkat manor roles. He's like, no, I'm a man. I'm a short man. That is some great brand synergy, though. If you had that motherfucking narrate some meerkat manor. Mm hmm. Oh, That'd I, be kind of cool. I just, I, w- I would love the, if he's going through like the interview circuit like they always do. And he's just like, now for 
this has to be the dozenth time. I'm not actually a meerkat. <laughs> I've been ans- I've been answering these questions for you know, for a month now. Could you please not ask that again? I, I don't live in the ground. I always really loved him in the NyQuil commercials. Oh right, yes. There was a series of NyQuil commercials in the early '90s, and he he's going to his neighbor's doors, <gasps> yes. and he's like, "Oh, I'm, I can't sleep." And it's fun. <laughs> it's a good performance. Can I you- believed he was sick. <laughs> And I mean, of course, you were talking about NyQuil commercials and fucking meerkat voices, but he was a huge theater star. Oh, of course, yes. yeah. Uh, this, is, but he, this was his yeah, big but, uh, Hollywood uh, IRL break, uh, playing a real-life person. <laughs> it, was, it was not a meerkat. Not a, not a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, he's freaking out about, you know, believing that his lover is having an affair. He wants palimony papers. He wants all, all sorts of things. It is Odd how they play this, where like when when Val enters and you know he doesn't immediately say hey dad, and it's yeah. a lot of like a hug and a kiss, yeah. and we're stroking faces, and then it's like hey pop, and I was like, why would you bother doing that yeah. movie? That's kind of weird. For the last guy that didn't read the synopsis before getting the movie, like, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute. Well, they do that. That it's the weirder thing they do in the original is that there is this uh, uh, very long gag, quote unquote, where like you're not sure if it's the lover or not. Like, yeah, okay. he actually like thinks it's for a minute. You're supposed to think this is his boyfriend. Got it. In this one, you're just like, oh no, that's his son. Very <laughs> clearly, clear, clear we're son. not going to be doing that. No, no, no. Well, the, that's what I'm saying, though. The movie does kind of do that, so the French one must be, like, incredibly drawn out. This, that one was extremely... This one, I was French just like, kissing? of course not. French kissing with the sun? Or? <laughs> no. Well, it's a French movie. I, I mean, maybe they, during the French cut. That's how they kiss know. everywhere. Yeah, they kiss everything. <laughs> that's, that's how they kiss. That's, that's how, how the French kiss. One of the things when, when Armand is trying uh, to get her to go downstairs, Nathan Lane whips out, like, this old-ass... Like World War II electric shaver oh, and just yes. starts going to town on his face and his chest. And I was like, dude, those things make you bleed. Like, you really yeah. got to be careful with it's, that shit. It's the, the razor Bugs Bunny would use if he was going to shave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not a razor that, like, an adult that in the 90s would have used. Yeah, springs are coming out of it. Yeah, stuff like, yeah. And I mean, the foley is so good here. Like, I just, I remember that noise and my father yeah. using those razors. Yes. And, like, I was screaming inside. <laughs> What I love about the, the relationship between Armand and uh, uh, Albert Serena is uh, that there is this, I, I wish we saw it, there is like what is clearly a war between Starina and Carmen. Oh, yes. Because yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. like all, all fucking Armand has to be is like, you know what? Put Carmen on. And yep. she's like, nope. No, fuck yep. that. Fuck that shit. I don't care if you're fucking some kid. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Carmen. I'm at it. I'm down there. There's another world where this movie is just about the goings on of the actual birdcage, and it's almost just as good. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Absolutely. Just the day to day. You know, if like we uh, remade this as like a max television series or sure. something. Give them know? time. Yeah, no, I know. Well, no, you know, it'd be funny if you remade this movie now, it would be woke. <laughs> you know, because it's the Ugh. same fucking thing, but now it's woke. Man, don't you just want to flush those fucking people down the toilet? <laughs> the only way it wouldn't be woke. Nice. That's right. I mean, what the fuck? Is if Gene Hackman burned the house down with everybody inside. Then it wouldn't <laughs> be a woke movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> because if these people are allowed to live and exist and have feelings and thoughts, now it's woke. Yeah. Starina makes his grand entrance, right? And she's dressed like fucking Whoopi Goldberg on Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> With this incredible, like, it's like a like a purple and black, like, mushroom hat. It's awesome. And, you know, she comes down the stairs, uh, you know, starts singing some Sondheim here. And uh, I'm totally distracted because they cut to the audience. And there is, you catch this uh, extra alert. I always got to call this out when I see it. You catch this guy that's sitting front and center? No. Mm-hmm. Was just he this grade A American fucking Kentucky waterfall coming oh, up. Oh, nice. Just a yeah. mullet to beat the band, dude. Well, you know, maybe he came that. from like northern Florida and came down. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> that's a panhandle special. That's what that guy's got. <laughs> We usually don't let these in, but you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try a little bit. Uh, it, it's a funny gag because he keeps looking over at uh, Robin Williams. He's like, the second you, you know, I go on stage, you're going to go but to whomever you're going to go see. He's like, no, right. no, no, not at all. And obviously he's going to do that. That's funny. It's humorous. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it, it is. Humorous. Uh, this, this is the introduction of the, the great, uh, I mean, you sort of meet him when they're trying to get uh, Starina to go downstairs. But this is Azaria in this like strawberry pink wig. Yes. 
uh, singing Miami Sound Machine. It's so fucking funny. Well, all earlier he gives um, Albert pills because it's like, oh, it's like this yes, whole like great, man. like this great performer. Like, oh, she's going to get strung out on these pills. But the joke is they're just aspirin. You can't be just giving people too much aspirin either, Hank Azaria. That'd be like, tough. You know well, what I mean? No, like but a- yeah, no, I get it, man. But, you know, Agador does specify, like, you have one before the show. Yes. You have one aspirin. Two aspirin in a night, you're all right. Yeah, man. I guess yeah. so. It's a, good, it's a party drug, you know, and then in the morning, <laughs> the morning you feel better after you take it. Well, all, I mean, the, the, there's also the problem. He sucked on Epto-Ismol. <laughs> That's, it's really hard stuff. Now I'm just thinking of Ecto Cooler and I'm thirsty as fuck for that green. Dude, imagine fruit your juice. stomach was always coated. Just oh. always. I could get that. Let me, I want that. <laughs> Give me like a bladder down like there a, to, <laughs> to, to protect me from other things. Like, so something that would like, so it's like a device in your body that would excrete this liquid well, into your uh, belly. Well, so then say, like a doctor's the belly's like, down here, Eric. They got to, but you're, but the lav is over here. You got to fill you up here. Okay. And then it goes down to the belly. Have you made this contraption <laughs> I'm yet? I'm trying or? to. What the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> well, man? I'm saying if you. Is this, okay. Oh, I this can't is, swivel my chair if anymore. You, Look at this. If you, is this your saw machine? You, well, if you want something to constantly coat your stomach, you're going to have uh-huh. to refill the thing to coat it, right? God, I, I suppose so. So you've got to get like a hose out and, or something, right? <laughs> you've done a lot of research on this? I'm just trying to make your dreams come true. <laughs> okay. Oh, Chris Cabin, I appreciate you've it. wished that your stomach be constantly coated by Ecto Cooler. But first, there's going to be this thing up here that goes to this thing and then down to this thing. You know what? I'll... You're right. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, that would be cool. You would look like Bane, but it's just like Pepto-Bismol <laughs> instead of like something cool. Oh, you think you have a stomach ache? <laughs> oh, I was my... born with one. <laughs> oh, my tummy hurts. <laughs> Oh, if I remove this, it'd be very painful, and I'd fart a couple of times. <laughs> oh, my, I have a boo-boo in my belly. <laughs> oh, if I take this mask off, I'll be on the toilet all night. <laughs> and that the person he was working for, Al Ghul, that sounds like a, not Al Gore, Ra, no, no. not Raz Al Ghul. Raz, 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 Raz Al Ghul. It is Raz Al Ghul. <laughs> Raz Al Gore. <laughs> All right, forget it. Let's just stick with Roz Al Gore. I'm going to take over Gotham one light box at a time. <laughs> Don't then worry. World domination. That civilization has to fall because of all the environmental issues that are actually going on. <laughs> and they're serious. I'm tired of it. I'm going to move the doomsday clock up to 12. <laughs> I mean, speaking of the doomsday clock, we get introduced to Gene Hackman in the middle of this scene. Hell the great yeah. Gene. I mean, the great Gene the king, Hackman. The absolute king. Yes. Senator Kevin Keeley. Kevin Keeley. Gene Hackman. Uh, like, uh, can you imagine nowadays being like, you, you, you go to, you do one movie that you're like, this fucking sucked. And then you actually stop. Yeah. yeah. To do the Mooseport move, it's just, I, right, I, I will never not have. Welcome to Mooseport, his last film performance until he was on. Diners, drivers, and dives. Yeah, but, that's right. Good that's cameo. Right. Good choice. Honestly, yeah, yeah. if a comeback special, pretty good. It was yeah. It was it was Triple D, and then he appeared on someone's TikTok walking through a gas station <laughs> parking lot. I love. I mean, here's the thing about that's Hackman scary, now, man. man. It's just like when someone spots him in the wild, it's like they're seeing Bigfoot. They got to fucking yeah. film it. <laughs> like these proof of life videos. Like I swear to God, Hackman's still with us. Look, he's getting gas at Shell. Oh, wait, wait, you didn't see him? He was serving us at uh, Destination Dogs. He had- <laughs> what do you want on your hot dog? <laughs> that wasn't Gene Hackman. I saw the zipper on the back of his back. It was <laughs> fake. They faked that footage. <laughs> We're rolling out to see Royal Tenenbaum. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, um, a question about... <laughs> What's that grave about? <laughs> question about the hack here. Um, is this like... Because I know he you know, sort of dabbled in some you know, some funny performances, obviously, Royal Tenenbaums. Mooseport, I guess, was cataloged as a comedy. Yeah. Uh, Heartbreakers from 2001. Yeah, like is Lex, this, Lex Luthor's a comedic performance also. At, at sure, everyone. but yeah. is, this, is this in this movie like his sort of broadest comedic performance... It is. I was trying to search through the old uh, filmography there, but the dude's been it's, in a it, lot of movies. It's really broad, but it's but it's also he's playing the straight man too, because like he's just like, what's going on here? The but whole he movie. does it. He does yeah. it so well, exactly. Though, yeah, and so naturally, and it's so not 
the person that Hackman is. I mean, it's a true performance yes. in that well, way. Well, he, he praises Richard Nixon at one point, and he was literally on Richard Nixon's enemies list. So, Dude, like, that's like, so, you You should be dining out on that. If that happened, I'd be telling people left and oh, right. Oh, are you kidding me? Guess who hates me? Yeah, I didn't care for that conversation picture. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's playing a saxophone like that all the time? Why would you do that to innocent floors? <laughs> Don't you love floors? I love floors. We all love floors. You know, I saw that night booze. I don't know about eating fondue in bed after sex like that. <laughs> I love the idea. Or maybe it was just like something where like Nixon saw him at a party. Like, oh, I've seen that man a nice Jack and Coke. I love his pictures. And he got ice. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want my Jack and Coke, huh? Gene Hackman. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, no. Not Nixon, shoot. man. That's another dude I'm glad is dead. Oh, sure. Uh, yes. Long yes, death. Yes, Long yes. Death. Give it up. There Give it up go. for his death. Yeah, for death. And let's hope for some more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> One of my dreams came true the other day, man. Rest in piss, Pat Robertson. Yeah, that, was nice. that, guy. that was very nice. Boy, I was waiting that out. Huh? Wait, wait, hold on. That's just tasteless. A man spends his life hating a whole group of people. And then to celebrate when he dies. Yes. Yes. That's how that yeah. shit works. We get that sometimes, man. I've seen like, well, very progressive of you celebrating someone's death. And I'm like, Fuck that monster. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, have to be, I don't have to be progressive. I'd just be joyous. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. He's dead. It's really great. Don't hold me to a standard, man. I will fucking cheer when a bigot kicks it. Whatever. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> the fuck do I have to lose? It's the circle of life, and sometimes it's the best part of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we find out uh, from the Robin Williams and Val scene. It's, it, early on, it's just, he, he just like, hey, dad, I'm getting married. And Armand is very upset because he's like, dude, you're only 20 years old. You're going to ruin your life. And he ain't absolutely wrong. right about. Man. I mean, no offense to anyone who tied the knot early, but Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> yes. It's uh, nice to get some done. I mean, it, it's amazing because, like, it, it, in the original, it actually looks like a 20 year old. It's a young man. This wait, 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 guy looks French, like he's so 37. He, like, this guy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask in the uh, French one if he was playing even younger, you know? I, no, I think he's 20 still as they well. They start early. Yeah. Well. He kind of looks like Andrew McCarthy's stunt double, by the way, too. Like, But speaking bit. of starting early, so he's 20, and then we cut to Gene Hackman. Speaking of starting early. Because he goes to <laughs> he goes to Calista Flockhart, who's also 30 years old in this movie, yeah. playing it as somewhat 18-year-old, because he says to her, you're getting married. You're not even 18. And then she says, yeah, we've been sleeping together for a year. And I'm mm. like, hold on. Mm. <laughs> I got my abacus out, and I was like, wait. <laughs> That goes that way. This one goes this way. Yeah, I find nothing morally wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. And this is 20. Like, you're, you're college sophomore, junior dating. I don't even know. Like, going to, go to junior high, dude. What the well, fuck Well, that's are what you I was saying. To? Like, she must, what is she, some sort of fucking Douglas Hauser or something? <laughs> In college at 16? I like that. She could be. She's just a very big fan of the Stevie Nicks song, The Edge of 17, I think. <laughs> it's just right there, you know. Uh -huh. It's a good tune. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, but yeah, and also we're introduced... <laughs> Uh, we're introduced to Diane Weist, of course, as oh. Louise Keeley. Oh, man. The it killer. is amazing, man. I mean, it, call the fucking petting zoo. All their goats escaped. Every last yeah, I mean, I know. She's, my, minus the kids, but, uh, you know. She is slinging straight fire this whole fucking movie, man. It's incredible. I mean, this, the entry point with her, like, oh, Kevin, so have I. Oh! Yes. <laughs> Just unbelievable reaction shots in yes. this. Uh, there's the great thing where, you know, so Callista has to make up on the spot, like what the, the father does. And uh, she says something like, oh, he's a cultural ambassador. And Gene Hackman, like without missing a beat, is like, that the son of a bitch that did the Robert Maplethorpe exhibit? <laughs> Was he the guy responsible for me looking at black and white photographs of asses and dicks? So he's turning into Nixon, too. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 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 Thanks for calling it out, dude. I really appreciate the support on the stage. <laughs> Every time. I'm all about support. I do love, but yeah, it's great. But you, you all, I'm going to call you out even more. You said this is when she has to start making stuff up. No, she doesn't. <laughs> she can Fair. just say, I'm getting married to a guy. He's 20. His parents, oh, yeah, you're probably not going to like it. His parents are gay. And he's also Jewish. Like the idea, she, I feel like even like, uh, even Val is like, oh, yeah, so you made up some story because they're not gay. Wait, what? Coleman, what's that? What? That's a problem too. <laughs> 
I mean, I thought, oh, 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 okay. I'm going sure. sp- to spend the rest of my life as Coleman, Val Coleman. <laughs> well, yeah. why, why don't you give me some options other than Goldman? <laughs> Let's hear them now because I don't want to make them up. I don't want to be talking like this. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you can't go that close, man. Like, it's got to be Johnson or something. Sure. Just to really separate. But then it wouldn't be as farcical, of course. The, the, what, what, what with it being a farce? What with it being a oh, farce? Yes, that's, that's, that's right. The humor. That is, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, Starina comes up after the show. And this was a question I had, too, about the timing. Because Robin Williams is, like, sitting outside on the lanai or whatever. And, and he's like, ooh, be quiet. Val's asleep. And I was like, how long was this drag show that this kid's, like, passed out? He was just drinking a, a glass oh, no, of wine. She started riffing. You know this thing's oh. going on for fucking ever. <laughs> That's true. I mean, there there was at least one costume change because she comes up here and she's dressed like Judy Garland from Easter Parade. Yeah. <laughs> No, Would have it, loved to seen what that number was. It's like a three-hour situation. You're like, can we go? <laughs> You're losing the audience. <laughs> There's two people left, and they're we Kennedys. Sh- <laughs> we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't have agreed to that extra hour. Era, get my coat. <laughs> <laughs> I love this the show. Uh, talking too long and singing too long. I got to go drive a car off a bridge. <laughs> and then Whoops. somehow blame the woman. <laughs> Uh, I thought that, that Marilyn, happened. Look I that. thought that Marilyn Monroe number was tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> How dare they? The uh, lady playing me couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> uh, but this is what I mean, it's really like fucked up because Nathan Lane is so excited to see Val. He's like, right. "Oh, cool, my son is here." And then, like this entire movie, Val treats him like shit. Just yep. absolute shit. And all he comes back with is like, I, I love you, boy. Yeah. I love you. I I still love you. You treat me like fucking dog shit throughout this movie. <laughs> I next, still love you. The next movement is him, like Nathan Lane, like parading around town getting these cakes. He's so fucking excited. And meanwhile, he's like, that son of a bitch has to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. So tired of seeing him. I hate Albert. <laughs> You gonna criticize that impression too, there? Kevin? It is pretty bad. It's not good. I gotta tell you, that does not sound like Dan. It sounds enough like him. I love this breakfast scene. The like my favorite detail in this breakfast scene is, uh, and this made me feel uh, really at home. Robin Williams is sitting reading the newspaper on an exercise bike, but not using it. Yeah. <laughs> and when I tell you that the exercise bike in my house has been uh, spending more time in our second bathtub with a curtain closed over it than it has with my ass cheeks on it you better believe it it. it's quite the image when you go in there you're like "Uh, uh, okay how are you taking the shower but we have we have two showers oh well there you go that's that's easier and i'm sorry well i mean that is good to have the exercise bike in the kitchen like that because every once in a while you can just start pedaling and be like yeah i did the exercise for the day right yeah yeah. that's (laughs) it i I burned it off right there i did it don't worry about it Uh, i also love we're cutting to gene hackman watching this mclaughlin group kind of parody thing and these two dudes are screaming at each other it's a smarter show on television. <laughs> but you also find out, which is kind of an interesting, like, kind of lead into his character, that he's like, oh, I'm so glad I got on the moral outrage bandwagon. The as a Coalition post- for Moral Order. But he we says, call it the Freedom Caucus these yeah. days. Yes. But he calls it a bandwagon very specifically because right. he knows that it's bullshit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, even, yeah. like, they care about this stuff, but they don't care about this no, stuff. No, they're just craving fucks that like money and, and power. Coalition of the Moral Order sounds like some scary... Star co- Wars thing? No, like Grand Dragon level. Of the oh, Kukas yeah. No, that's true. Whatever, you know? <laughs> some yeah. DeSantis level shit. Yeah. That's where the red robes come out, not the old white ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he has, like, co-founded it with this uh, other senator, Senator Jackson. Yeah. Eli Jackson. Eli Jackson, who we are told at one point was just a common redneck. D- <laughs> Diane Weist says that it's yeah. amazing. She says, he's a common redneck that we were depending on for money about yeah. 10 minutes just ago. Just like most of Congress. Yes. <laughs> but this is, of course, the only time we see Eli Jackson. On the TV. On a TV. And I, I don't think we ever get to see him again. because No, you know, because he drops dead. Uh <laughs> While the program is doing, but the dude playing him, he kind of looks like a like an overweight Noam Chomsky a little bit. Sure. Does a little oh, bit. Yeah, like yeah, speaking yeah. of which, yeah, <laughs> this guy had an Epstein Epstein tie. This guy, this oh Chomsky, yeah, that was well, a bummer. he did, and yeah. then Eli Jackson here discovered his body with an underage <laughs> prostitute. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just you know that guy had his tentacles wide and long, especially in the '90s. <laughs> I feel like this is about to turn into McLaughlin. Oh, cool. Group. We're gonna <laughs> hang out at Eli Jackson's house, baby. <laughs> 
Oh man, the coalition for moral what? <laughs> no, yeah, I left my saxophone there. <laughs> Can you ship it to me? Uh, but yeah, so Gene Hackman gets a call. He's it looks like he's working on some sort of manuscript here. Uh, because there's like a big uh, you know, bound thing that he's reading and giving corrections. Manifesto, I think is the word. Yeah, yeah. New Bible. <laughs> oh, those people call it manifestos. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but there's the great line where he's like making a notation to like the editor or something, and it's like uh the word is porno, not pronto, which is great. <laughs> so you can only imagine what he's fucking rambling about in that. But his book. like no his his the guy leading the, the charge, you know, got caught in this really like shitty situation or like immoral situation i don't know dude if you're in the rest of the movie gene hackman does like running from reporters be like well that guy was clearly a pervert i am not end of story well dude i mean take a sec man look how hard it is for these motherfuckers to unhinge from the other motherfucker that's true you can't you know it's all for the vote man Go for the votes. <laughs> uh, no, but this is great because when Hackman gets the phone call, this is when you realize you're in for an R-rated movie because he goes, I don't fucking believe this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> excellent. We're going to have some adult language in this movie. I like that. And yes, uh, Eli Jackson has been found dead uh, while uh, a sex worker was having a great time with him. And uh-oh, wouldn't you believe it? It's made even worse because she was black and a minor. This, we are throwing it all in and Hackman getting really, really pissed off about all of it and this is sort of like their uh whole you know angle of the movie is uh you know diane we says well this is great because we can use our daughter's marriage as a way for you to rebound to this again really fucking cowardly garbage shit but that's who these people Di are diane we the killer is just going <laughs> like she is so subtle in all these like the way she keeps on saying a nice white wedding yes, and yeah. all these dude yeah i think things. she's talking about the guest list there well, man don't like, worry about it that's what's great about the performance is it doesn't go big it's all yeah. about these little intonations like uh right. it, it, towards the, all the fucking rank terrible shit they actually believe but because of this you will you're actually allowed to laugh at it like families can laugh at this and be like oh those pieces of shit <laughs> <laughs> just like that too just yes. as measured and calm yes. <laughs> don't lose it just be like <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to Drive to South Beach today. Uh, From Ohio. My God. <laughs> we have to do this tomorrow. No, we don't. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no the we don't. The faster you get out of Ohio, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Can we teleport there? That's the only way it's working. I'm sorry. I love the bit of Hackman uh, climbing up and down this ladder to get out of the house. Because so all the, the media is out there. And he's trying to go down the second time. And the press pool's there. He sort of just addresses them. And the funniest, and I feel like this is very like Nichols and May. No one addresses how weird it is that he's talking to the press while standing on a ladder. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then when he's done, just climbs back up and goes inside <laughs> like Clarissa's best friend, Sam. <laughs> Twang. I'm so glad that played. Woo. <laughs> Speaking of 50 50. Hey, uh, Clarissa, is your dad home? Oh, God. I mean, yeah. I mean, the idea of a 68-year-old Gene Hackman going to 15-year-old Melissa Joan Hart's bedroom via ladder, not such a great it's image. Really? A really cute cat you got there. I really uh, like him. My friend Jeffrey said this was okay. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's also the great bit, and this is like, you know, to really tell you how insane radical right this dude likes to be, uh, where they're like, oh, well, maybe we could get the Pope's blessing. And he's like, oh, this Pope's too controversial. Maybe Billy Graham. No, too liberal. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So you're just like into Mussolini then. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> like that. I mean, that's Play just what hits, that dude. is, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And um, so they're going to start driving down. And this is when Dan Futterman's like, all right, dad, new complication. Everyone's coming here and your house is far too gay. By the way, I don't live here. And thanks for paying for my college. Yeah. You know, that dude does not have a student loan. Uh, to speak not of. a single nickel. Oh, my God. And just like, yeah, throw all your shit out. <laughs> Oh, and all your shit, including the man who raced me, by Dude, the way. Dude, 
Yeah, so like, you know, your your apartment with all your statues with the big juicy cocks, those yes. have to go. You know, a lot of your paintings have to go. And also, yeah, the dude who loves me, we got to send him like a, like an unwanted dog. We got to send this dude away. <laughs> we can keep all the penis statues, but he has to go away for good. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you're just supposed to like be in this dude's corner kind of? Like, yeah. what the fuck? We're just like, oh, he's just... He's just a kid. He's Look at just him. in love. <laughs> exactly. Okay. He's almost 30. He's just a child. <laughs> Take it easy. He's just a, lightly a bigot. So just be nice, okay? But it's, I mean, Williams in this movie, you know, he wound up playing Armand. He was supposed to play uh, Albert, and then Steve Martin was going to play Armand. Bullet dodged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't no. think that would have worked. I mean, no, no shade against Steve Martin, but like, no. Yeah. And. But also, LOL, he couldn't do it because he was making fucking Sergeant Bilko. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Look, hey, uh, I mean, swing and a miss. you get to work for Phil Hartman. Uh, yeah. There's two glasses of milk. This one's ice cold. This one's hot and looks kind of gray. I'll drink this one. <laughs> Sergeant Bilko milk. <laughs> Sergeant Milko, dude. Exactly. <laughs> no, but so then he was like, all right, well, if Martin's out, I'd rather play Armand because he was just coming off a doubtfire where he was again, you know, and dragged the whole movie. Uh, so this works out. But you get to see some real like Robin Williams acting here. And he's got three lines in this scene alone that just knock my socks off because... Uh, I don't care who, because the kid's like, he's a senator, Dad, and he's a fucking racist and an anti-Semite. <laughs> that's close. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, right. that's, oh, that's thank about you, right. Thank you. That's, that's and good. I want to spend... I've been chasing Chris Cabin's seal of approval for over 20 years, so, you know. <laughs> Look, close baby. Is you you got to work get. for it. <laughs> but he goes, uh, he goes, I don't care who he is. I don't want to be someone else. Excellent. And then he says... What am I supposed to do to like, hey, could you, could you, he says shit like, could you walk differently? Yeah. Eat my fucking ass yeah. shithead. <laughs> yes. And then he goes, the best one, fuck the senator. I don't give a damn what he thinks. Best line of the yeah. movie. Uh, Non-comedic yes. line. Yes, end but. credits directed by Mike Nichols. <laughs> That's the end of the movie. He's just like, yeah, no, there's no farce. Fuck that guy. Yeah, what do you think of my short film? You fucking friends and family. Oh, oh. <laughs> It would have been just as good. I win again. I win again. But yeah, cover up your gay. Cover up that you're Jewish. You better tuck that Star of David necklace into your oh, yeah, tank top. That's like a double demon, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gene Hackman will just set on fire if he sees it. That's how that usually goes with them. Uh, also, we should mention, too, that... Uh, a crooked, like, National Enquirer reporter finds out where he's going because he uh, bribes the, the chauffeur there. Grant Heslov and the good counselor from Heavyweights. Got it. Right. Yes. yes. Character good- actor Tom McGowan. He played uh, Kenny, the station manager on Frasier for a while. Also, I mean, just a phenomenal character actor here. I, I, I am a little surprised that the relationship between Armand and his son goes past this little piece of shit taking his fingers across his father's fucking face and taking oh. the foundation and smear. Wouldn't you just kill him right then? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I, like he, already the mother has abandoned him. You can get rid of him real quick. <laughs> the ocean is right there. At least slap him. I yeah. don't know. He's 20. He could take it. Da, da, da. Killing is better. You touch there's, my face, I'll touch yours. <laughs> there's a there's a crazy uber 90s thing that happens right here where Robin Williams goes, uh, I just had that wall sponge painted. You guys remember sponge painted? What walls. Is sponge painting. What is sponge painting? It's yeah. exactly what it sounds like. It's when your mom takes a sponge, puts it in a paint tray, and dabs the wall with it. Uh, oh. You bet your ass I lived in a house that had that all over the place. <laughs> oh, but, baby. It was trendy oh as fuck. O- only oh the walls that are sponge worthy got the treatment. <laughs> true. That's true. A lot of a lot of accent walls. You're not necessarily doing a whole room. It's like I motherfuckers uh, like five, ten years ago. Everybody on HGTV was talking about shipwap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the shipwap of the 90s. Got it. Okay. Yeah, my sponge painted wall. <laughs> well, we got to talk about another staple of the 90s. And uh-huh. That is uh, Keely and uh, the missus are watching uh, a Jay Leno. Yeah. Jay oh, Leno yep. is who would, would not turn down a chance to do one of these little bits. He in does a this major- in so many movies. I, I, I have to imagine, like, at the top of a year, like, he he decides which ones he's going to do, right? All the big blockbusters. Yeah. And he just takes a day in the yes. studio just yep. doing it, like, right away. 
Hey, and so did you hear about uh, all these military guys taking over the, the, the prison over in San Francisco? <laughs> huh? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Uh, what's, oh. what's this one for? Uh, Costa Garvis' uh, uh, what, Z? What, City Z? Hall? <laughs> what was that movie with? Didn't he direct a movie that he... Uh, Mad City? Oh, Mad City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Folks, you wouldn't remember Mad City. <laughs> it was, it was in the would. 90s, but it wasn't a staple. Oh, oh, did you, you hear about this? You hear about this in New York City? Godzilla was running all over the place. <laughs> Had a bunch of babies in Madison Square Garden. Ninja Turtles. Like this guy had no dignity when it came to any of this shit. Get this, folks. Get this. It's it's a stoner guy who moves to his his family's house for Thanksgiving, and he's got to be the son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that would make Jay Leno's news report, but Did, oh my god, uh, just this just didn't. Mufasa is dead. Simba is king. <laughs> Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Ethan Hunt, he's selling the knock list. <laughs> what are we going to do? Where, where are we going to get it back? Selling the knock list indeed. Uh, uh, I love how accurate it is because there's no punchlines. Really. <laughs> <laughs> the man is not a punchline artist. He's a setup artist. Did you hear about this? It was an amusement park and it was all dinosaurs. And <laughs> went right down the toilet. They call it Congress. <laughs> Hey-oh! See, and so that's a little more of a Letterman there. It had a punchline at the end of it. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's like Letterman would not. You can't just imagine him doing that at all. Like he would. Ne- he had too much dignity to be. No, like, oh, he was. He was yeah. in fucking Cabin Boy, though. Yeah, he should. That's well, fair. He well, will do your Cabin Boy. Well, Cabin Boy was written by one of his writers. Yeah, and obviously it starred one of his performers. And that's right, Chris Elliott, underrated King. gem. <laughs> that's right. Wow, Chris, Chris Elliott, one guy. Put respect on his name. Uh, but so, like, he kind of begrudgingly agrees that he's going to have to get Albert out of the house so that he takes Albert to lunch, basically, to tell him he's got to go. Yeah. And it, it does not uh, uh, really happen. I mean, it, it, it goes terribly. And he just immediately is like, well, how about not? How about yeah. we don't do that? Why don't we immediately just go back on that? Well, idea? because his fucking relationship is hanging on by a fucking thread. <laughs> this little piece of shit is like, you got to get him out of here. And he's like, well, what about Uncle Albert? How about that? Straight old Uncle Albert. No! <laughs> no! no! Gone! Get him out of here! Get him out of here! He scares me! It's Florida. Do we have basements here? Lock him in that if so. <laughs> basements in Florida? Anybody? No, they barely no, exist. No, no, all right. Barely exist. Yeah, all right. Do you hear about this? There's a basement in Florida. It's full of alligators! <laughs> I guess that's why they don't have them. The alligators go and live in them. A daughter's trapped in one, and her father is upstairs. Uh, coming up on Jay, uh, Asir Arafat and Kate Hudson. Kate, Kate Moss. Moss. Kate, Kate Moss. Moss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the great I Pierce the Toast bit, which we just watched on the. Oh, my God. That, oh, my God, I Pierce the Toast is one of the funniest fucking line deliveries in film comedy ever. Yes. It's so great. But I got to say something here. Big F plus to the prop department uh, mm. with this fucking lunch that they're having. Like, so they sit down at this cafe. Robin Williams does definitely say to the guy, the usual. And what comes out is, you remember the photos of the Firefest lunch that they gave <laughs> yeah. people? Yeah. That's what these fuckers are eating here. Yeah. It's like, it's like wet, soggy white toast, yep. a brown piece of lettuce, a tomato that's seen better days, and a slice of maybe Swiss cheese. <laughs> it looks disgusting. A tomato that was stolen from a Wendy's chicken sandwich <laughs> and brought to this restaurant. Like, this is the worst looking tomato I have ever seen. It's Horrid. The, it's the depression restaurant. Everything's 38 cents, you know. <laughs> you got a couple of jet fuel coffee, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Come on in here and pretend it's 1934. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like this giant they cast uh, as, oh. the, as the villain guy who's just like, are you calling me an asshole? <laughs> oh, that's it's, a great line. No. Are you laughing at my automobile? <laughs> uh, this was what after the after the uh, John Wayne walk. Yes, oh, the, it's, it's I love the John moment. Wayne walk because it is not as off base as you might think it is. You yes. ever, if you've ever seen John Wayne, like it's every every first step was like he might fall right the fuck over, <laughs> just, and it was probably like because of boozing on set or something, but. That is a weird waddle that dude had. And just Robin Williams' reaction of like, no, that was perfect. I just never realized he walked like that. <laughs> so good. I also love when he clinks the glass on the phone yes. to congratulate oh, yeah. and it breaks. Oh, fuck, yes. fuck. So fucking funny. Not you, dear. Not you. He's, I don't know if he had, I don't think he has it on at the lunch, but on the walk to the cafe, 
He's wearing this backwards, like, white baseball cap yes. like he's going to play pickup basketball with Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson. <laughs> it is so weird looking and kind of feels like not for the character. So it's only really like that one scene. I do wish that we got uh, after this scene, after <laughs> Rob Williams gets his ass kicked, uh, you get back to the, it, it, like, you get an 80s montage, like, take it to the limit. And it's just them watching, like, the searchers and Big Jake. <laughs> All these old John Wayne just like pointing, doing like math equations to be like, this is how the gate should go. You know, I thought a different movie was being put on when you decide to play Rooster Cockburn. <laughs> Nathan Lane comes down dressed as Genghis Khan. Like, no, not that. <laughs> not that. <laughs> Get the makeup out of here. No, 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 no. Stop that. The Conqueror. There should be an, at the end of Oppenheimer, they should do a, a memory <laughs> of, of the cast and crew of the Conqueror who would, who died from radiation. Yeah, poisoning. program anyway. those together. I, I, that's something oh, yeah. for some, somebody That'd to do. That'd be a great thing for a retro house 40 years from now. Yes. yes. That would yes. be weird that like they're playing it and it's like kind of like a uh, maybe it's like pictures of the actors so it's like a little victory lap kind of thing. You're playing a fu- like maybe the song from Animal House at the sure, end yeah, plays yeah. at the end of Oppenheimer. What like really go fucking bonkers with it? <laughs> I would love I'd that. Appreciate it because uh, you know you're gonna need to laugh at the end of that movie. Oh yeah. But around here, so like basically the idea is well, if Albert's gonna stay, that's gonna you know uh, make everything much more difficult. I guess we can ask your biological mother who's just up the road and never said anything to you. <laughs> you I mean, literally... But then again, if you saw this kid, you'd be like, fuck him. Too. You'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I really want to know and like more about this relationship. Yes. It's, in- it's just interesting to me because, you know, she has the kid and then that's it. This yes. is the one place where I think that I, I actually, I like this movie way more than I like the original, but this is one place where they fumble the ball. The original is a lot more about how the kid is still pissed off about the fact that he was abandoned by his mother mm. and like had this situation with his parents. Well, you're going to well, need a real actor to carry out those well, scenes. That, I mean, well, this, this was, was a baby, so a little bit, but well, like... Is- this Val doesn't have that. No, but it's also this is 1996, and there was that law. If there was a movie about a gay couple, Christine Baranski had to appear. So yeah. that was <laughs> just fair. sort of like. It's on the books for a reason. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, she she's just she doesn't fit in the movie, but she's going to goddamn be in the movie. God damn it. I got to have a note to the costume department right here for this scene, too. When they when they cook up the idea of, like, maybe we can get Ma on board here. Because, yeah. like, yeah, you've never met her, but she loves a good farce. Um, <laughs> he's sort of, like, he's sort of sitting like this uh-huh. on the couch. And this dude's got these shorts on. The crotch is blown right out of these. Oh, really? Yeah. You can't be in a movie and have Swiss cheese crotch. I just couldn't <laughs> believe what I was looking at. Uh, One more hole in his hanging brain. <laughs> I'll say what I like about just general appearances in the Christine Baranski scene is mm. this. She does it, and I've never been more jealous of a woman in my entire life. She just starts putting her hands in the chest hair of Robin Williams. Oh, oh yes. Which is, oh, I was just like, she's, she's searching oh. around for seeds or something in there, man. Just, I want to put my nose in is it. Is that a press it in? Is that some crumbs? A quarter? <laughs> Get a, it's like going through a quick couch cushion. Oh, what, a boat oar. Wow. Here's some cocaine from the 70s. Got it. Got it. Oh, this is all the cocaine from the 70s. Wow. <laughs> but coupon for dish detergent. <laughs> but the funny thing is, like, because that's the thing about the, the Christine Baranti character who, like, there's a world in which it's like, oh, you know, like I was a, a hip lady in the in the 70s and my friends wanted a baby and I was cool with it. And I just, you know, I gave I gave mm-hmm. them that opportunity and no problem. But this makes her to be this like weird sex crazed maniac because she's like, well, yes, I uh, I showed up in your dressing room half crazy and drunk <laughs> and we made it happen. And it's like, meanwhile, what the fuck with this Chester? Yes, oh my God. She is <laughs> feeling him up and, you know, good for her. Al- and Albert, again, is right. He's like, I don't want you in there with that hussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hair. Exactly. That's my chest hair. God damn it. I mean, True. you know, you're touching his nipples at this point. <laughs> She Keep your hands it. out of there. I'm, I'm, I got my lunch down there. <laughs> Don't go rifling through my things. She's got a great line where he goes, uh, sorry, you're married. And she responds with, uh, I'm between husbands, yeah, which it's... is fucking fantastic. In a way, only Christine Baranski could deliver a line mm, like that. Absolutely. She was, this is hot streak time. This and Bowfinger, like within a year of plant, my God. That's right. The queen. I forgot my God. she's in Bowfinger. Ooh. Is Amazing she B- Bullworth? Is she the wife in Bullworth? She might be. I haven't seen Bullworth in a Been long a minute, time. Yeah. Do you think she's ever uh, paid for a drink at a gay club in her entire life? Never. Absolutely no, not. Not once. No. Not, 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 no. Not, not a fucking penny. No. 
Big tipper, probably. Probably a huge tipper, really but nice. But not, not a penny. No, I, I don't no. even think she's getting charged at the Pizzeria Uno. <laughs> like, I, 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 I think she's doing fine. <laughs> I gotta say, when they're they're dancing, why, why would what? she? Go, uh, the idea uh, of Christine Baranski at a pizza yeah, yeah, at the start of a Mad Libs. Yes. <laughs> Christine Baranski at a pizzeria Uno. She likes it Chicago style. What can you say? Uh, okay. <laughs> no, uh, so uh, you know, I was just noticing like they they do like cute little dance number here, sure. um, and I'm looking at the shoes and like there's heels a little bit. But not a lot, not enough to make her tower over Robin Williams oh, yeah. like this. It is a real giant woman situation. <laughs> Look how fucking tall she is. Oh my God. It's a giant Christine Baranski. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. There's a cheap sci fi movie you can make. So I have to be a, a bit of a nerd once again here. In okay. That they are singing a Sondheim song called mm-hmm. Love is in the Air, yeah. which was supposed to be at the beginning of a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Indeed. And then was pulled at the last minute. And they put, I forget what the other song is that they put in. in However, instead. a funny thing happened on the but way like, the forum starts. That is perfect. Like for talking about like a relationship that was major, but then had to leave. The fact that they sing yes. that song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it just has, it adds this level that I think most movies like this don't think about. Right. Like, right. Nuance. Yes. Yeah. That's the Can thing. you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine such actually, a thing in American comedies these days? The Coalition of Moral Order outlawed it by like 2000, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's all the hateful shit, then also we can't make big comedies anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strike it from the wreck. Can't have any thoughtful <laughs> scenes either. Anyway. Uh, but, you know, Albert comes in, catches her with her. Like, I mean, her hand is between fucking five and 12 down there, man. It's it's getting close. Dude, it's, you know, thank goodness Albert came in when he did, because I don't know, man. I think she might have been trying to go for round three when well, all she's of a sudden. Just like, oh, my God, this Chester. Oh, pubic hair. How about that? <laughs> it I'm continues g- down. I'm going to save some of these. Yeah. She is fascinated by it also because when they were together, yeah. he had shaved his chest. I see. Which, I mean, you know. War crime. Yeah, yeah, totally. But also... What, every 20 minutes? It's I was going to say, I mean, could you imagine like him actually trying to do that? Yes. I hope you got a fucking Costco pack of razors on you. <laughs> it's just him laying back like this and somebody with a weed whacker just getting closer and closer. Easy, <laughs> easy. Okay. Don't move forward. Whatever you do. Uh, but she, she does agree to do it. Yes. And... This makes Albert feel kind of on the outs at this point. And this is basically, is this the funeral scene, which is the best part with the, uh, I bring my two. Yeah. Cause like, you know, he, he takes the car and drives off and leaves yes. Robin Williams to take well, the bus home. That, it's funny. Uh, uh, Val is doing the, uh, uh, subtract, don't add. Yes. A uh, bit about getting all the statues out of right, time. Right. The playboy line is fucking it's great. Good. Who put the playboys in the bathroom? And the dude turns around and goes, that's what they read. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> that and the enormous crucifix is oh, really yeah. great. <laughs> Which it is funny that the uh, the thing that was supposed to be there, uh, like, because the, the dude comes back with like a huge stuffed moose head. Yes. Yeah. And then I started thinking about Welcome to Mooseport and I had to pause it <laughs> so I can get that shitty fucking movie out of my head. Oh, yeah. You gotta but scrub that shit out. It's a great little detail because uh, Hank Azaria trades the moose head for the crucifix. He's like, oh no, this works better. And he's like, and they also threw in these books. And later on, you see Diane Weiss go up to them and say, like, <laughs> oh, the complete Nancy Drew, which is just a hilarious, like, <laughs> remaindered book joke that's just yes. for me, but I'm good for it. I'm good for it. Now but- I'm just imagining Mike Nichols as it's all being finished and they're striking the set and like he just like crew look at me you see this man up on the cross that's me (laughs) that was me and now I've made the bird cage (laughs) fuck you I win good for him you know (laughs) go for it man three days later he came back (laughs) and then that other set of footprints was Mike Nichols carrying you (laughs) dude so he says to Nathan Val that is says to Nathan Lane's face it will be better without an uncle and again Fuck off, yeah. major character this, of this movie. When, when he's dressed now as like a straight presenting in the suit, and I just love the the pink socks. It's like 
Well, one does want a hint of color. <laughs> right. That's why I wear my pink socks. You can't tell, but one does want a hint of color. You it's do. Totally I, I love that. That scene is so uh, uh, just perfectly gentle in the way yes. that you yes. talk about. But it happens after my favorite scene, which is the bus stop scene. Yeah. yeah. Where they're just where it's Robin Williams and Nathan just talking about what we're this is our life yes. like this we're gonna this is i've agreed to it this is i have confirmed now i'm not thinking about any other kind of life this yes. is the life i want and i'm going to have now but i want in that scene is like listen we raised a kid we fucked up honestly it was a mistake <laughs> you know what he turned out well, real fucking shitty well, i don't you know, know the most selfish person i've ever met in my life he's a piece of shit we need to do this one thing for him it's one night and then we'll never see him ever again mm-hmm. that's right you know what this is it this is our, our goodbye song to val <laughs> but i'll write really- him a check and that'll be the fucking end of it but it's really great because he's uh, nathan lane's like i'm going to los copa and he says well the only thing there's a shitty cemetery and when they, they get to the bus stop with like the HMS Titanic pulling yes. by, and then this huge fucking boat. It's your bunch of uh, cater ship going behind. Yeah, totally. But it's 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 so fucking sweet. And he's talking about like you know, uh, you make me laugh, yada yada. And he goes, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch my you know beautiful cemetery plot that I have over to the shitty cemetery, so I don't miss any of the laughs. Yeah. And I'm like choking up, fucking telling you about a movie you already heard the line for. But it's it's really great, and it's just it's a it's a moment where there's like. It's almost devoid of all comedy. And just yes. the, the whole movie just like the whole movie is literally sitting at this bus stop, just kind of having this this sweet scene. And also this is where he he shares that he he's like, Oh, I'm not lying. Like here's the palimony papers, yeah. we're gonna sign them. Now everything's fifty fifty. It's fucking gorgeous. Well, it's a great scene. It's funny. And the well, big fucking tugboat behind it is incredibly yeah. distracting. <laughs> I mean it's fucking but otherwise, the eye. Uh, primo scene. It's woke is what it is. <laughs> 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 Two people caring about one another? Uh, that, Sounds woke to me. That's woke. Uh, beer, that's woke. Uh, what else is woke? Oh, the NFL now or something. <laughs> of course. Like, everything is woke. Oh, uh, the uber woke NFL. <laughs> what fucking planet are you on? They, well, they let someone kneel once, so they're woke. Oh, yeah, I right. I just right, like, right. now they're, they're trying to trick me to drink it Bud Light, and I'm like, I can't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the interesting thing about this part, because we had just we had gone through a couple years where we were learning that Robin Williams can do like sentimental really well. Yeah, like right. he was a, a, a humor machine before then. And now you knew he could do the sentimental family stuff. And this is, to me, the connective tissue to where he ends up doing stuff like. Goodwill Hunting, yeah, Insomnia, which are much more measured performances. Hunting and this, was like just the year after this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it not long after this. Yeah. And then it, it, it's in this performance. There's all this sadness in the performance for Robin Williams, but he doesn't overplay it for a minute because no. he can see he can go right back into humor. I I always am shocked by how good this performance is. There's very is little great. what we'd call Robin Williamsing in this movie. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. N- none of that. Th- that's like virtually absent, aside from when you know they're rehearsing, which you saw in the trailer, and he's doing Twilight, 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 all that yeah. stuff. And you, ex- the, the there's twice, there's two times where he goes to make an announcement in the birdcage, like main room, and it's like a shot of him coming to the microphone. And you just expect from like Good Morning Vietnam to be like, hello, Bernke. Yes. And it's just like, all right. And now come <laughs> to the And you're like, whoa, this is really different. You're like, he's not talking about uh, like Groucho Marx at all. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't feigned having a cigar in his hand once the whole movie. Weird. Sweat isn't dripping into the microphone and fritzing it out. <laughs> but yeah, then there's a great scene where Albert is turned away. Finally, like he, he comes out as Uncle Albert. It's not good enough for fucking little Val. So he storms off, go, closes the door. And oh, the Keeleys are here. So the, the, the farce has begun at this point. But really quickly, if being incredibly shitty to his loving parents was not enough, he goes up to Agador and he's like, hey, motherfucker, (laughs) talk in your real voice, you fucking piece of shit. (laughs) I'm the boss here. You know that. Me and my fucking wacky, ha- what is he? He's got the troll t shirt oh, on. Yeah. What a piece of shit this kid is. I, you need a uniform, mister. <laughs> hey, my dad's paying your ch- check, and I'm an asshole to my dad, so I get to say whatever I want. And this is one of the parts, though, where like Val sort of looks down at the floor and it's like close up on Hank's feet. Oh, Look yeah. Look at the fucking feet. I was into oh, it. Yeah. Not bad. Again, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. Nice but feet. I do love that when I wear the shoes, it makes it's, it's like the, the, one of the bigger jokes of this movie, like that kind of caught on. Yeah, but it's just a fucking ridiculous idea, isn't it? 
It was just wearing huge clown shoes that No, just couldn't. making shoes that would make you fall down. The idea of wearing <laughs> shoes at all right. makes, makes you fall down. It's yeah. humorous. Yeah. It is pretty yeah. nice. It's a comedy. It's a funny movie. I, I'm also it's anti-shoe. Just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, this guy, not unless he absolutely has I, I, to. I hate fucking shoes. Get, get him the fuck out of here. In real life, it's like Frodo Baggins over oh, here. Man. It's just a forest down there. <laughs> I love the the sequence of like the Keeleys pulling into South Beach and it's like, uh, you know, Ma and daughter in the backseat and Hackman's riding shotgun. And it's like a bunch of like babes and like dudes in banana hammocks are walking by and like the ladies are looking at the banana hammocks and Gene Hackman's like, ah, yeah, look at the ladies. And you're like, yeah, of course these people are full of fucking shit. Yes. Of yes. course you're going to look at this and be turned on, man. It's at a beautiful part of the country. Look at it. It was all awesome. people wise, not here. politics wise and everything. And else. this is, this movie has the most Jeb Bush mentions maybe right. ever. Yes. Dude, what was that about? With a whopping three. It's like, Wow. That is the that is the cultural impact of Jeb Bush. I'm glad someone please clapped already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please clap. I mean, that is like the most damning that that he is best. Gene Hackman's character is best friends with Jeb Bush is as damning as it gets. <laughs> like, because he's not even like the serious like cutthroat Republicans. He's just some guy who talks on TV all the time. But I think it's that clout chasing thing, though, where it's like, I'm friends with someone in a political dynasty, yeah. you know, because when uh, Mrs. Keeley hears like, oh, yeah, they live close to whatever island where Jeb Bush lives. That is a ruined pair of underpants on that lady. She's like, <laughs> where did you say they live? <laughs> By who? <laughs> Bush Island. <laughs> oh, Bush Island, man. Look out. Yeah. Nary a razor oh, there. Oh, you know, I had a serious... I had a series of tapes called Bush. No, you don't forget about it. <laughs> Poppy, yeah, yeah, you, you Poppy I thought this island would be different. <laughs> well, Junior, leave your razor on the dock. We're on Bush Island. Well, yeah, I Steve, you had those on tapes. But, uh, you ripped the label off and wrote WrestleMania 93 <laughs> on them. Salmon Kings Bush Island. <laughs> well, Junior, I don't think we should uh, put a temple on the island. I think that's a bad idea. I think that would give people the wrong idea. <laughs> Hey, Poppy, what's a banana hammock? <laughs> it's a hammock that you put your bananas in, Sonny. <laughs> you know, it keeps them ripe. <laughs> oh, it keeps them ripe indeed, Ooh. dude. But uh, Christine Baranski is stuck in traffic, of all things. So, like, basically, we're starting the farce yes. with just Agador uh, Armand, who's... Uh, his whole name is different. It's like uh, Agador Spartacus. Agador yeah, Spartacus. Spartacus. And then I don't know why Agador needs a fake name. He doesn't. You know, I feel like there was some maybe like deleted but scene Dad, where he was like, "It sounds too gay." Oh, that could be. Yeah. <laughs> now bring me my candy. Now is that a is that a uh, I'm stomping going up the stairs or is that like I'm having a, a pitch and a fit? A, 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 a fit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice like, little know, temper the, tantrum. Yeah. Like yeah. those little kids get twenty year olds. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, can't drink yet, Eric. So they they do throw wow, tantrums. That's actually true. Fuck. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you know we're exploring the weirdness of the house. I love the uh, the the dedication to the cross. He says, I think uh, Rob Williams calls it a monastery. Like it feels yes. like a monastery, which is yeah. really funny to me. <laughs> Uh, there's the great sort of mix up here where he says like, oh, like we, we bought in early. It was, it was mostly Jewish back then. And Hackman's like, I thought you said it was mostly sand back then. <laughs> and Williams is like, oh, you know, the old saying, where's their sand? <laughs> he says there were Jews around here and all of a sudden the Kill Bill alarm sound starts going <laughs> off. Gene Hackman coded in red emergency lights. You said what? <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, we don't get, the funny thing about Gene Hackman in this movie is that, and I've seen this like dozens of times at this point, they do really make a point of being like, every time he has something to say, he like loads a program. You can see him loading a program yes. <laughs> from the back of his head of like how he's supposed to talk to Rubes. Right. Yep. And right. he's just like, ah, oh, the leaves, ah, oh, the leaves. Uh. Going through yeah. Kentucky. Oh, God. And the, through Georgia. The foliage, yeah. And the foliage. Uh, and if it's tangy and brown, you're in Cider Town. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
It's just <laughs> you know Ned Flanders boring ass shit. It's, it's it, amazing because like you could just it, it's it, it feels honest that as a pol- a political maneuver it feels right. It's also just that brutal like meeting of parents that <laughs> if anyone's participated in that, good God, is it awkward? The root talk. Oh, yeah. the root talk. Oh, How'd you get here? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. did you take uh, seventeen? <laughs> oh no, you took ninety four. Oh, interesting. Uh, wait, wait. This is all they're talking about, and I decided. <laughs> to give them a whole new life and a story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got here via Google Maps. I, I don't know what the route was. Uh, oh, was uh, many clouds in the sky when you were driving down? Oh, no. Oh, funny. Trees Weather. swinging the brain. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, uh, the National Enquirer guy has gone, has followed them all the way down. And someone from like a local TV station is like, hey, isn't that that National Enquirer guy, whatever his name was, Harry something or like Harry? Harry Radman. Harry Radman. And they're like, oh, yeah, he, he gained a lot of weight since the O.J. Simpson case. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like an overweight actor, whatever. He's not in the scene. No, I guarantee not. you he didn't know that was in the movie until like, <laughs> dude, he was watching it. This motherfucker is at the premiere. In a rented yeah. tuxedo, exactly. <laughs> proud as a pig and shit to be in this major motion picture, and he just gets torpedoed yeah. with a secret fat joke. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know what? It's great. I'm finally in a movie. There's no fat jokes at my expense. No, no, honey, swear, seriously. I know every other movie. There's like something. I, I was every scene. I was treated like an equal. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, look how fat he got since the OJ trial. <laughs> Look, it, it, like, yes, I had to be in heavyweights, but that was a, a deal with the devil. Now I can move <laughs> on with my life. Fuck. Fuck. God damn it. Uh, but no, because, they fi- because they see that now, like, every lo- local station is, like, right. on the hunt for the conservative center- senator in, you know, in the birdcage district, I guess we're calling it. <laughs> oh, in the birdcage district. Yeah, they call oh, it yeah. the birdcage district. South Beach. Yeah, yeah I think no, South that. Beach, that's it. Um, and, you know, in one of the absolute greatest reveals in movies. You just hear this like Julia Child ask, here I am! <laughs> and just fucking heads up for one of the greatest things you've seen in your life yeah, is, is this performance, man. Oh my God, is he great. It's, uh, and it's like, he's so, he gives exactly what they want. There's yes. that great bit about abortion and... Uh, great bit about abortion, right, folks? No, but it, it's <laughs> they're talking about abortion, and it's like very contentious. You hear about and, this? And <laughs> abortion, <laughs> you know, like I think even like Val is trying to steer away from it, but they're like, oh, you know, like I think uh, Gene Hackman's like something. Well, the doctors are only getting it because they're doing the abortions, and then uh, yeah, it's one of those like I'm not saying we should kill abortion exactly. doctors. But then uh, he said, um, Nathan Lane as this character, as it's like, it's hilarious. It's Nathan Lane as a character, as a character. And in that sort of prison, it's like, well, they should kill the mothers too. The, the fetus can go down with the ship. And it's like, <laughs> go, go down it's, with the ship. Because she's doing what he thinks he, he wants to hear. And it's yes. so fucking funny. And, and it turns out he does. He does. Like, exactly. So oh, it, it kills at the table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, he loves this shit. Senator Keeley is falling in love with Mother Coleman hardcore right here. Yeah. I, I will say they make it because it's Gene Hackman. It, it, it's a little more cute and cuddly. Like the 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 father, the conservative father in the original, they cut him out of Salo. Like he was going there. <laughs> That was his weekend wow. plans, and then he came back. Like, they so, really overdo So he it. was also a senator of some kind? Yeah, a, a kind of. A head of state of sorts, Eric. Sure, sure. Uh, but then this is the great thing, too, where, of course, then he brings up uh, the dead senator, uh, and, you know, she's like, oh, well, we don't believe a word of that, and we'd like an autopsy, and another just killer Hackman line. He's like, that's what Rush Limbaugh said. <laughs> You can like you can see the fucking hearts in this dude's eyes. Yeah. Also, fuck that pig. Yes. Rest yeah, in okay. piss. That's Rest nice. in piss. Yeah, that's nice. Hope you got buried with your golden microphone, you piece of shit. My mm-hmm. I love that we're just getting applause for people who died. We have yeah. nothing to do with. It. Congratulations, we hate movies. R- uh, Limbaugh was the one that I got a talking to on the internet about being excited That's about. That's true. Yeah. Oh. Right. So, so, William Buckley's dead, right? Oh, William yeah. Buckley's dead. Yeah. Hey. This is know. this is killing. Let's yeah, keep going. Crap. The rest of the We're show is dead. You know that this. son of a B Adolf Hitler took his own <laughs> life like a coward, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, who else? Who else? <laughs> they they got to think now. 
Uh, no, you get this are. great uh, moment where they're all dancing, uh, singing and dancing. Do I could have danced all night for my fair lady? And you know, Robin Williams is playing the piano, and Mrs. Coleman is dancing with Senator. Ke- and it's just all so great. Yeah. This whole this whole little choreographed thing, and then in comes Azaria, like singing the rest of it in this big booming voice. It's so awesome. And then dinner is served. One of the most disgusting soup scenes this side of dead alive folks <laughs> the only thing that could have made it worse is if someone's face fucking fell off in the soup oh, and then they ate their own face this soup is really gnarly uh, i would have loved it if val did that if val just starts melting into the soup that sounds great it's giving me some you know temple of doom vibes yes. Yes. oh Very yeah much totally so. oh the chilled monkey braids <laughs> oh delicious i do love the bowl gag is obviously hilarious where it's a, a a bunch of uh men in greek garb having sex with each other on the bowls we don't see the bowls but like and, and like no one has their glasses like i think that's what it is and like nathan like oh no there's a girl on mine which is <laughs> the idea of like just playing that off oh no 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 the mine has a girl on it so it's fine and then Don't g-dack, g-dack would be like oh, i know something that's not a girl <laughs> i don't need my glasses to tell you that <laughs> Uh, Somewhere around here, too, is when Callista Flockhart forgets that this is Albert in drag. And I was like, you have one job. <laughs> <laughs> you got one job, Barbara. Uh, you know You're what? You're fucking it up. You know what? I don't put it past Val to just be le- like, let her swim on her own and be like, no, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just a normal night. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, oh, not even telling her no. what's going on? No, no, no. Fuck you. You're 17. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the great ad libs here. The, the kitchen scene where he's freaking out about the soup getting served and he yells, fuck the soup and slips and falls on the floor. And it's an IRL. Williams is beefing it yes. and just keeps in the moment. And the three of them are just like laughing their asses off. Like he's screaming to yeah. kind of like mask it. It's yes. just the whole thing is just a comedy school some in a little of, scene. Some of the best goddamn it's I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. Just Jesus <laughs> screaming. Like, God damn it! God damn it! Uh, but yeah, so like they're kind of like just kind of getting through. Meanwhile, there's a note that is on the door for Christine Baranski to not come because you know it's fucking too late now. Uh, by the way, thanks for nothing, mother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to not talking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know I needed you for this, but you know what? Well, Fuck she it. gets she gets caught in a Miami traffic jam, which is uh, a bridge came up because a sailboat was flying. Yeah. Leave earlier. That's the thing. Yep. <laughs> Hour early. You Every don't want to be late for a farce, folks. Exactly. You really don't. Because you never know if you're going to fuck it up. Uh, but the the dastardly and fat guy from the National Enquirer. <laughs> so you mention this guy's fat. I want I wanted to go out of my way to just Plot mention the that. movie does not want you to forget. <laughs> so Kid Crisco is back in the picture. <laughs> Take it from here. He grabs the note, so like now the farce shall be certainly ruined. Um, and you know we're we're kind of this is about when Albert's wig starts to, to tip a touch, which is because ever of course in this situation farce or no, you are boozing hard. Don't worry about sure. it. And he's getting kind of wasted with all the with all the wine, and yeah, he sort of leans down and comes up, and the wig is askew, which is fucking great. And then this weird like all four of us are going to the bathroom yes. at the yes. same time. <laughs> And meanwhile, Gene Hackman and Diane Weiss are about to fucking break up their marriage of yes. 80, 100 years. <laughs> well, it turns into Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf for like five minutes. <laughs> I know what's going on here. <laughs> and just like for five minutes, you, you see all of this shit. And she's like, oh, you love her. It's like, I don't love anybody. And it's like, holy shit. I see what's going on. She's a small town girl and he's a pretentious European. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, the, the, the he's the, he, he invokes Aristotle Onassis, which... Love that. That's totally great. I noticed you didn't have this compassion for Bessie Jackson. Yes. <laughs> Bessie Jackson's an old hoot. <laughs> oh, I think he says cow, actually. Cow. Yeah, well, you yeah, know. Yeah, how do you like it, fuck face? Fat, well, I wasn't <laughs> pretending. <laughs> uh, but so she, um, so like as they're like kind of trying to fix the wig, wouldn't you know it, Christine Bransky does show up and she's like, hello, it is me, the mother of Val. She has a good uh, thinking on her toes here. She's like, I forgot my keys, which is a great yes. explanation for why she's not just walking in the door. And man, classic Azaria line right here. Where he's yes. like, can I take your purse for the first time? Or maybe like I always do. <laughs> 
And then this is where the, the everything comes undone. She introduces herself. I'm Val's mother, uh, Mrs. Goldman. Yes. And Gene Hackman goes, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I was having dinner with Jews. All of a sudden, there's fires outside. People are screaming. <laughs> I got to get my stomach pumped. They better put their <laughs> Jew magic in it. <laughs> Nixon also said that once. Yes, Nixon yeah. did. <laughs> that was caught on the tapes at the White House. I mean, that's what you want to be careful. You don't want to have those Hebrew national hot dogs, folks. They do have <laughs> Jewish magic in them. And that might upset your stomach a that, touch. It used to be in the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> now with 50% less Jewish magic. <laughs> Trying to get and a bigger sodium. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is, you know, Hackman thinks that, like, Baranski's, like, the lady on the side or whatever. Yeah. So he's like, how many mothers does Val have? And this is where, like, and I get it. Like, we're trying to keep it short. The movie's already, you know, pretty much two hours, and it's based on a play and all that. But this is just, like, it's not enough to save this guy where he's just, like, you know, I have one mother, and she's right here, and this is yeah. my father. and He's a nightclub owner, and she's the star. And, like, it's nice but I still hate your rotten yeah. guts, dude. Absolutely. You're still a total douchebag. There's no walking that back. It's been too long. It's been a whole 24 hours of hell. I mean, you I, need, I, I can't deal with it. You need to really apologize to Albert. There's no, yes. That's, that's yeah. what the movie is missing. There's exactly. no scene like that. Yeah. You know, I'm all for a movie wrapping up quick, which this pretty much does, but like, you need that moment where he's like, you raised me exactly. and I was garbage to you. Yeah, and you I don't was so get scared it. and blah blah blah. Like, give yeah. him something. Blah, exactly. Blah. But yeah, it's not there. Uh, no. But so now, uh oh, the, the press is outside, and we don't want the Keelys to be totally ruined. So how do we fix it? What about a big old dance number, everybody, where everyone's wearing drag? Yeah. That's right. We are family, indeed. I love this. Just coming through the club, Gene Hackman looking like a hungover Dame Edna. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, by the way. <laughs> uh, Not the piss. And, yeah, and there's a great Diane Weist bit where she, she, there's a guy's like, I never danced with the man. And she goes, no, you have. She does like a man there's voice. A, there's a first time for everything, it which it's is so great. great. <laughs> and uh, Gene Hackman knows, knows the song, uh, the the words to "We Are We're Family." We are family. <laughs> da, 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 ba, da, ba, da, <laughs> that's, that's all you need to know, man. It's an easy one to fudge. <laughs> Callista Flockhart looking like fucking Winona Ryder and Beetlejuice. <laughs> yes. Like she's got the black hairdo and like the like caked on white makeup. And the thing is, this is the one moment in the, possibly the entire the credits are like around the corner. I They're coming one, quick, yeah. I have one second to like Calista Flockhart. She's like, look at all these guys. They look better than me. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh, out of 10, lady. Zero out of 10. Yeah. You want to give her a character? No. Nah. Maybe just pitch yeah. one in there. Just and then Val and this piece, just they, just they just get to dance the night away because good for them. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. The happy couple. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I guess yeah. it's good. Guess this was worth it. This fucking twenty four hour god, twenty four hours to do this all. Insanity. <laughs> I do love. Uh, they they got out of the club. They get in the car, and they're kind of like crooked chauffeur. Uh, Gene Hackman's like, meet me at the corner, the forty fifth and ninth, and ten minutes. It's like in your dreams, lady. <laughs> it's I, what I like. It's really great because he's like, meet me in twenty minutes, at the corner of El Dorado and Palm, and the guy goes. Lady, not for a million dollars, and it's the end of the movie. And it kind of, I think it might be like a some like it hot, like yes, nobody's yeah. perfect kind of yeah, sign yeah, off yeah, gag, yeah. which is pretty great. Which is why we don't, I honestly don't think we need the wedding. You know what I mean? Like the no, wedding is but no, yeah, you no. had to let the fucking heteros know that everything was going to be a okay yeah, yeah, with yeah, those kids, yeah. man. Yeah. That's Confirm what it was. It. Someone at MGM was chomping on a cigar, like, that can't be the last time of the movie. They got to get married. I mean, the Lord's got to bless it. And. And I don't know if this drag queen was confused or she needed glasses. But she's like, is that Bob Dole over there? He's gorgeous. And I'm like, <laughs> pardon me? Yeah, Bob Dole regrets coming to this wedding. I mean, that's I, it, it tells you how little they care about this wedding that they're putting in the credits or just going yes. over it. And you're just like, okay, dude, I guess this happened. In this movie where you have Robin Williams and Nathan Lane king shitting for two hours, the freeze frames on the two of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> 
fair well, enough. Well, to Clarissa Hart, I mean, like, she had nothing else to do, so at least sure. she gets that. Yeah, I, I give her he, that They should have just killed Val and the kid. And they, <laughs> the whole, like, weird double murder at the Dude, end. Dude, so, like, end of Animal House, where it's just like, uh, Val was never seen again after going to Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Well, also, you want an easy way out. You throw Val off of the roof of the birdcage. Yep. Let's see if he can fly. Nobody's going to be paying attention when you walk out. I Think guarantee you. can fly, you. Valley. <laughs> yes. What is this, the end of the game? <laughs> oh, oh, we forgot to tell you Clarence Boddicker lives on the roof. <laughs> uh, and that's the birdcage, folks. That is it. Great movie, great movie. Hell of a picture. Very good. Hell of a picture. Great movie. Um, so we got to start wrapping up, but we want to thank all y'all for coming out. Give yourselves another big yes, round of applause. Please. Thank you. Uh, a round of applause for everyone who played the VHS trailer game. That's thank right. You everybody. Thank you for throwing out Steve's tapes later. <laughs> No, hold on to those. Uh, big thanks to the folks here at the State Theater who invited us. This was so much fun, and we were most happy to oblige the invitation. Um, real quick cue. How many of y'all have seen us live before? A couple nice, folks. Okay. Nice. Nice. So uh, for all the newcomers in the crowd, uh, the only way to end a We Hate Movie show where we've just been raucously going through a movie is to check in with the source of some of the greatest, grounded, right. most intelligent film writing on the internet. You guessed it, the IMDb user review section. <clears throat> now, we got a few here, and I decided, you know, it's we love movies, you know. Only one uh, one-star review. Okay. okay. So we'll get that one out okay. of the way first here. <clears throat> one out of ten stars. Oof. Subject line, two words, bad movie. Ooh, wow. Uh, Senator Keeley wrote this one. <laughs> Three words, not enough birds. <laughs> Honestly, great call. I, 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 not I got two things wrong with that title. <laughs> I'd like. I'd prefer to see more cages myself. That's, it, they're also nice. Uh, user Susan Webb. Mm. Written, a, uh, written on the 21st of May, 2002. <clears throat> she might be dead. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Susan Webb's dead. 2002, yeah, she's probably dead. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, in 2002, Susan Webb wrote, From what I remember of the original, even though the characters are unbelievable, they aren't this annoying. Mm. In this film, everyone is unpleasant. <laughs> and now this is where I agree with Susan. But Dan Futterman's Val wins the honor as being one of the most unpleasant characters I have ever seen. I like her. I like her. This is All good. Right. This is she, She's got it. She's got it. Don't worry about it. Why anyone would put up with his petulant demands is beyond me. Dead on. Rest in peace? <laughs> <laughs> Susan Webb is dead. Susan Webb is dead, is dead, is dead. <laughs> Susan Webb's in the eyes of the angel. Uh, I know that there wouldn't be much of a movie otherwise, but in the French film, I don't remember the son being that much of a baby. Now, what you'll notice if you go through the rest of the one-star reviews uh -huh. for this movie is all these dickheads reminding you, I saw the French version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, where do you think I learned it from? <laughs> <laughs> these are very smart people. <laughs> uh, the film itself is an exercise in predictability. Mm. Uh, I'm a fan of a farce, but when it's this labored and unfunny, it can become tiresome. Mm. I have never quite got Mike Nichols films. <laughs> I think we're Did back it? in rest and piss territory. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I also don't know that you need a fucking rocket science degree to understand the graduate. Yeah, well, yeah. wait, hold on. What are they looking at? Are they happy to be married at the end? They're not happy to be married. <laughs> wait a second. They're taking a bus out of the wedding? <laughs> Uh, I've never got quite got Mike Nichols' film, so that may have something to do with it. And now it's going to be right back to piss here. Ooh. And I think that Robin Williams is a vastly overrated an actor. And I can think of, I can think, dude, these people can't write too. That's the other thing. I got to say this stuff on stage. Some of the worst grammar you've ever seen. I think Robin Williams is a vastly overrated actor. And I think... That also has a lot to do with the fact that I didn't like this film. 
Fuck you, Susan. Yeah, Rest yeah, in yeah. piss. Piss. Rest it's in piss. piss. Not peace. Susan Webb is dead, is dead. We are back to piss town with that lady. In yes. the eyes of the devil. It's not how that song goes. No. Yeah. That's it like the Weird be. Al cover. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, here we go. Here's some good stuff. Uh, but we're still going to make fun of it a little bit. 10 out of 10 stars. Subject line, c'est magnifique. Oh. Written in 2017 by someone still having an AOL email address. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe how hilarious this movie turned out. It is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. I can barely contain myself from bursting into laughter at just the thought of it. <laughs> Landed on pretty thick, AOL. <laughs> the acting is superb. The direction impeccable. In fact, the entire production is très magnifique. Uh, yeah, oh see, uh, see, this is what this is, right? I never had so much fun watching a movie. Three e- bam! <laughs> each and every character is endearing, and you get the feeling that each actor was born for exactly that role. Zutelo! No. No, no. All right, all right. No. no. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised there were no Academy Award nominations for Nathan Lane, Gene Hackman, Robin Williams, and especially Hank Azaria. <laughs> <laughs> Acc- now, hang on, hang on, uh, hang on. Uh, sorry, no, Dan Castellaneta is in the audience. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Was it that you were surprised that they wanted Azaria to also get a nomination? Yeah, all right. That's fine. It's fine. It's fair, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, (laughs) uh, Hank Azaria, uh, as the entertainer extraordinaire wannabe, the Goldman's faithful houseman. LOL. I am laughing as I write this review. (laughs) You must see it and appreciate it. 10 out of 10. Excellent. (laughs) Was that the Joker's sister that wrote that? (laughs) I love to laugh. (laughs) Sally Joker. Yes, it was. (laughs) Got a couple more here. 10 out of 10 stars. Subject line. I loved it. I bought it twice. (laughs) Written by Stewie Mm. in uh, April of 04. I think the movie is fabulous. It's a wonderful comedy with great performances and tons of memorable moments. Absolutely. Gene Hackman is great as the ultra right wing senator. Diane Weiss gives an excellent performance as his underappreciated wife. Deer in the Headlights, Callista Flockhart in a role pre... Oh, no, actually, Deer in the Headlights was my editorial. Oh, <laughs> there you me. Sorry about that. It's fair. Sometimes it just pops out. It I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's uh, extra funny because this sentence uh, goes like this. Callista Flockhart in a role pre Ally McBeal gives us a glimpse of her talent we will see later. Huge question mark. Let's move on. Just a glimpse. <laughs> just, a, just a peek behind the curtain. Just yeah. a little one. Yeah, you need to you need to use like one of those uh, uh, eclipse cards to view her talent. <laughs> yeah. ah, you, oh wow, there it is. That's it. Now remember, don't look directly at her talent. <laughs> you gotta burn your rods and your cones, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but the show is stolen by Nathan Lane and Robin Williams. I mean, they are perfect as the middle-aged gay couple. Robin is fantastic. Um, objection, Your Honor. You can't steal the show when you're the leads of the movie. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, it's just the show's absurd. already been given to you. <laughs> yeah, yes. just... uh... That James Bond stole the show, didn't he? <laughs> uh, you know, that Michael J. Fox as Marty McFly just really stole the show, didn't he? <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Uh... <laughs> Just the right combination of physical humor and, for Robin, rare understated delivery. Nathan Lane, what can I say? What can I say? <laughs> Anything? Anything? No one at all. else could have played this role. I loved it. I catch it every time it is on TV. I have the VHS, and today I purchased the DVD. Oh, nice. Wow. I give it two thumbs up. Loved Tu Wong Fu as well, so maybe my taste is just a little more evolved than some. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself patting yourself on the back. I can't hear We Are Family without picturing Gene Hackman in drag. Must be why I just bought that song on iTunes. When you get the fucking life updates from these people, Uh, 
And that is the sign off to your review. I don't give a shit what you purchased on iTunes. Come on. Just I mean, like you are so in need for that image. Just be playing constantly in your mind. Oh, Gene Hackman and drag. <laughs> Uh, while you're sleeping, you're playing the song. Oh, there he is uh, again. Dad, there's nothing wrong with fantasizing about that. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> All right, here we go. Last one to close out the evening. Here, 10 out of 10 stars. Subject line, Gene Hackman in drag is a hoot. Oh, wow. <laughs> hoot. Uh, it's just like an owl. <laughs> Subject line, or, uh, uh, written by Bergdorf. Hmm. Well, Goodman? A- <laughs> I don't know. Just Bergdorf. Well, I don't know. Uh, June of 2022. Between Nathan Lane's bursts of laughter, screams, and crying, and Hank Azaria's Agador, there is nothing but hilarity in this movie. Robin Williams gives a great turn, and of course, it's sad to know he's no longer with us. But just watch this movie, and you will have a gay old time. We've been We Hate Movies from New York City. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for coming out, everybody. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. We love y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye.